Jay Dilla Jordan? Yeah. Well, and we was having a conversation here. He tried to pull one of those, like. I just asked a question. He asked a question, then he backed off from me. <laughs> 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 we got, we <laughs> both got aggressive. Right. He, first of all, <laughs> I knew what y'all were going to say. I am my That's exactly what I said. I was like, hey, Q, I know what you about to do. <laughs> Don't do it. You know what I was mean? <laughs> like, let's just not have a conversation. Let's right. not talk about it. Like, all right, we was going, what y'all take is going to be. I didn't think it was going to go to that length for the whole thing. I mean, because I, 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 I didn't know it was going taste. this far. Right, because, like, like, I figured course. everybody knew, like, everybody felt that way. You're the first person I ever met that just was like. I really yeah. have never heard this. Never in my entire life. I didn't even say nothing. You ain't <laughs> had to. That's the thing. <laughs> it yeah. was the face and the back off. As soon right as we on saw cue that, live, oh, and we are live. I have some esteemed gentlemen <laughs> here today. I don't know what they're talking about. The man can't ask simple questions. But I'm um, starting with you, which one, man. Introduce yourself. Um, just raw, man. Fuck just raw. He's here. He's been on a few episodes. I never, never, never liked him. Because people tend to like him a little bit too much. Keep inviting me back, bro. Uh, and because he was on Petty God Live Reason. Shout out to Reasons to Live. Still a great album. And my man, you introduce yourself. I'm Jordan Plain. And you were on Donut Titties. Yeah. And Dear Bro. Yes. Really love that episode. And my man. I'm Really, he's on Barbershop Kangles and he proclaimed how he hate KRS1. Yeah, amongst a lot of other things. I don't think I saw that episode. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, like, long he was like top 15, first 15 episodes of Barbershop Kangles. Oh, and he said, I hate Karis, want to hate Jake Dilla. I was like, really, you hate Jake Dilla? Hold on, hold on. He's the only person I hate. The only person I hate more than Karis, one is Jake Dilla. I was like, damn. None of us are like this message. None of you should be here. Shout out to But on the music, no, I'm not going to go down there. On the music, no, I'm not going to go down there. You, you came to my mind just when this tape came into my mind, right? I was talking to someone about my uh, occasional hate for New York. Because okay. I feel like it was I overrated it was and well, it was so, always yeah. just hype about shit. To me, y'all just bigger and I just got more access things. I mean, y'all had more talent necessarily, you know, in, in regards to shit, right? Mm -hmm. Now I was thinking, like, there's a lot of people that be in, like, a lot of New York artists, music wise, that be in New York. And if they was in a different, they was from a different city, they wouldn't be with her because they really only are like what they are in New York and exactly. New York is so big. Exactly. Example, my man. You know he's still a legend. Oh. Fab. Oh god. Oh no, no. Fab's terrible. <laughs> right. Fab, I, I, Fab's I, one of the most Fab, Fab all time. Mm -hmm. Can you really horrible. imagine? Can you really imagine being in nineteen like let's say ninety eight. Let's say let's say first time out. And a and a nigga came out. Ninety eight. Ninety eight political climate, this social climate, you know. He right? dropped so and tape No, too. stop. A nigga yeah. walks out and says ninety eight. He spit a fire 16, and it's like, what's your name? He said, call me Fabulous. You really telling <laughs> I mean, me that he, guy? He popped off in 98, though. I don't like, understand. Yeah, it worked, somehow. You had the most aggressively homophobic, pause ass city ever. It I'm worked. still for It worked. That's, That's how fire he was. I mean, I mean it, it worked in, in that city, so did LL Cool J. I That's think crazy. a little bit more. I mean, LL Cool J was a sex symbol. Like, he worked for the women. It's true, crazy, because when I was in, like, fifth grade, I remember Fab dropped the album, and I was, like, in on the computer lab trying to listen to it on, like, I think it dropped on, like, New York's Time and something, and I was really into, like, music back then. Mm -hmm. And Fab was one of my favorite artists very early. On. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I like Breathe. I like um Classic. One he had that album I don't Roto. know. He had one of the, I don't know even know the name of the album that I was listening to. That's Roto. It was it was with, something with Breathe at least. Yeah, it was but it was I think it was the next album. Loso's way? Maybe not that one. It was like Oh, was from like, nine to something. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. It was from nothing to something. It had dropped on some platform and I really liked it. And then I liked uh then I was really into it when he dropped um there's no competition. Mm -hmm. I really was in a fan. Classic. Like, yeah, I, I, nah. oh, the first, the first two oh, no competition. Nah, but I, like, I know. I got. I have really, really reasons. good. Really, really oh, good. And then I did not like anything else after. Oh, that. Exactly. I did not like exactly. anything else after. Exactly. That. So we don't gotta get into the fan <laughs> because I, 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 I ain't even sure come here raw that. But my point was like, yo, like fan, because to me, fan really never did. Even though with hits that he's had. He never did much with touring, really, or like prolific albums. I've been, I was a very early fan fan as well. I had his first album, and I always noticed that not too many people 
have like his his discography isn't a thing. His his mixtape collection is, but mm-hmm. nigga really nigga really been thinking of Fab like three hours. Fab like seven albums in a row. Nobody really give a fuck though. My no great albums thing is a big quit for him. That's like a Los Angeles is great, but nobody really listened to it that yeah, much. But wh- whatever. Great. So I'm mean, thinking about this great. nigga. Like come on, let's not do that. Yeah, it's good. I stand by great. But whatever. <laughs> I like, but Fab wasn't from New York. Meaning he also didn't have the access that he had from being in New York, coming up in that. That city, that nigga fuck around be Gilly the Kid. That nigga from like nah, somewhere else, nah. some shit like that. Because he's so average and he turned out to be this great, I gotta imagine that he would have did this wherever. Anywhere else? No, Maybe I don't think it was so. A, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think so. Because like like you said, like New York is a big market, mm-hmm. so you already had that platform initially. It's, it's more so it's up to you to fuck it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I feel that. I feel like Fab made the right moves because I think he has. He has the perfect counterpart to see what happens if you do fuck it up in Red Cafe. Mm-hmm. Red Cafe is by and far better than Fab. Way better rap. But mm-hmm. I mean... Way better. Whoa, 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 whoa. Way better. Whoa, whoa. Red like, Cafe better than him. Way better. Way better. This it's is, it's uh, like... This all right. is beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> way, first of all, I'm not rolling really better. Y'all saying way better? Way like, better. really? Red Cafe is a really good rapper. Yeah. Red, Red Cafe has the one thing that Fab out. needs. Red Cafe can write hooks. You ever notice? Yes, he, he, I'm about to say hooks. I'm with you with the analogy because right. Cafe had hits just right. like Fab. Right. But the, what I ain't gonna think that. But, okay. <laughs> I feel but, like the collabs between them speak for themselves. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, you going like you put them on the track together. Who won? Who gonna come out on top? Red Cafe. I, and I think I think what you said about Gilly the Kid is really good because you got a, a artist like Gilly Casanova. never escaped Philly. Like, think about Casanova. Facts. I don't like Casanova at all, but I gotta hear about Casanova because mm-hmm. he's from New York. Because mm-hmm. he's made so and much. And it seems buzz. bigger than what it really is, or yeah. like more notable. Yeah, or no like the nigga who made Millie Rock. I gotta hear about these niggas just because mm-hmm. they're from this area. Or even on like another note, and I know he has like a cult following and shit like that. But Dave East, I was gonna yeah, say exactly. Like, like that. Dave if like, he was in Philly, he be yeah, he be, like he, 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 like, be Dave he just be core. Like, yeah, like, exactly. Like, right, cool. It's a million of them. Niggas, and, and I think the same thing's happening with Chicago rappers as well. Where it's mm. like Chicago has had that buzz and building this drill scene for a long time, and now you got to hear about a lot of these guys or a lot of the guys who came up in the same time as Chief Keith, mm. who got a lot of just caught because everybody's looking at mm. Chicago at this point. Mm. And I think this happens in cities all the time. It's just that New York is all the time that city. Right now, it's that. I think, New York and California never not gonna be popular. So right. yeah. that way. Mm-hmm. yeah, and and New York has like this weird push like along like the media outlets to get that prominent artist back to the city because they are aware of the fact that they lost that. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's yeah, yeah, probably yeah. in the hands of what Atlanta now. Mm-hmm. We can all agree course, Atlanta. Yeah. You know, has a in New York, the whole city is an industry plant. Right. So yeah. like, the whole city. <laughs> <laughs> so like like you see flex like, like everybody's gonna like the next person that start popping they want to push that person because they want to get want back. Young they don't get so fuck bad. With you see you see Young and May ain't do shit outside of New York. Right. Right. I figure out how to make an album. She just Cassidy with she just she she got the perfect like she she works as Cassidy. Yeah, she just Four split second. Like, uh, I'm a hustler in hotel. Um, okay. Ooh. Yeah. And then she gonna have another one. And then she gonna It's been two years already. Right. This is over. It. She missed her one. She window. give she put in the album. I, people still listening to the videos. It's people it's still over. watching the videos with it's the, the numbers. Cassidy yeah, had it, man. If we name all these rappers from Never New York right now, talk about A Boogie, talk about Don Q, talk about all these rappers. Hey, just New York. Yeah, just they, New they York. Are, I like A Boogie a little bit. Like, he's a person who can make a song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, like, Don Q is only popping because he was. Or look at this way. Like, great point. I've been looking at PNB, right? It's like, yo, where is, does he fall? Because he seemed like he's there, but, but A Boogie seems so far ahead. But it's really no evidence why. It's right. just the New York thing. Right. Like, right. A Boogie's literally just the New York P&B, but he's seen so much farther ahead for no fucking reason. Right. Like, exactly. like, and the yeah. same nigga. <laughs> it's, it's the same as that person. It's, it's weird. You know, P&B was one of the people that I didn't understand how they pop. Like, I didn't, and living in the city, I didn't know how he Seriously. got that, that <laughs> high. I'm like, what the fuck, mm-hmm. yo? And I just I can't I still can't understand. Like to this day I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The like, sheer wow, confusion. Like, it's, like, it's, it's not just some it's not just some status shit or right. people pushing it differently in New York. It's also just the connections. I mean that, that place right. is huge. There's so many people that and having connections in rap is really was pu- was pushing. You know what I mean? Stumbling, like, stum- stum- stumbling, stumbling across six years people. before it comes out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I keep hearing because I was totally unfamiliar with him until. Uh, he was, in, he was so in he went around and magazines and shit like okay. you can see him around. Like if you mm-hmm. if you look around, yeah. if you look back, you can see him in different places before right. he became something. Right. But 
I don't know. That, he's an abuser, so I'm not, yeah, I'm not trying to I had to I push fuck him. Fuck I this whole album, though. Mm-hmm. I, and that's the thing about Shaq is that, like, Shaq came up. I don't even like Shaq album at all. I don't like any of his. I don't like any of his. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nah, I tried to listen. I just heard one song for the first time the other day. My boy was not good. I can't think of it. My boy was not good. The same much? It was not good. They ain't played a song here the other day. I was telling that shit was fire. I don't know what song it was. That shit was hard. Hey, I'm not saying been, there might have been good songs on the album. I don't think that it's a good album. I and I think, wanted to like yeah, it. When yeah, I, listened to I didn't want to like I don't it. think it's cohesive enough. I think I don't know. He, he just had a lot of bangers on there, like a lot of energetic tracks on there that I that I liked. Um, technically speaking, nothing that wowed me. Nothing that was like, all right, the way that he was writing was like something for me to be like, oh, okay. But he definitely has a superstar. Uh, potential, I say at least. I just know I never wanted to listen to it again. <laughs> That's the thing that I was thinking. I was like, oh, I listened, cool. I was like, no replay value at all. I listened to it one time and I was like, Obama. <laughs> like that was it. Like that was like, all right, this is all I really need off this album. And like now I'm not gonna play it. Then I heard Justin's guy. I was like, yeah. Yes. And I was like, yes. yeah. Yes. 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 We're done here. To be honest, Obama never did it for me either. I don't know why. Really? Like it, it didn't give me the hot nigga. Have you been to a party when that song played? Like I. That part just, of energy, that, that's that it. energy was that different. Energy. I get you it. Can't, you can't fake that. Everybody can't make that course. happen. You're not but I'm just saying that, like, like, hot nigga, I still like hot nigga. Right. Okay. It's like, computer still my shit. My mom never gave me, like, yeah. that. I, didn't, yeah. I listen to the computer just in the car. Throw that shit on right now. Yeah. It's too much equipment around. It's like, Right, right. I cut the check later on. Right, right. I was like, that joke, it didn't give me that. For whatever reason, whatever. But moving on, all right? So, you know, we all um, from similar environments, whatever, or have access to similar environments. I don't know what criminal backgrounds you guys have, whatever. But to my knowledge, you aren't full, full-fledged full criminals, right? Mm. right? So, hot equipment, DH. But, um, <laughs> but at least for me, right, I've always thought about, like, what, what, not, what, what was, like, the main determinant of, like, me not going further into certain things and dabbling in certain things, whatever. So before I go... What are your guys' thoughts on that? Just being around certain environments and certain people, and the uh, the motivations and you know reason you stayed away. I think about that. I think about this every day because my brother on hot search right now, my older brother in jail. Like I'm, I've been surrounded by this. Like mm-hmm. my dad, like my uncles. Like I've been surrounded by this. And like I specifically remember one day, my brother was like, "I'm gonna put you on today." We walked down the street, walked to the vending house. He knocked on the door. I don't know, knocking on the door. Nobody came. And I think about that day every day because if somebody came to that door, mm-hmm. my life could be very different today. And like, so it's it's really just a bunch of lucky breaks. Like I'm thinking about when I went when I was in fifth grade, no fourth grade, and my counselor was like, "You got to go to a different school. You you can't go to a one of the regular schools, the school that you're supposed to go to. You got to go to a different school because you a smart kid, whatever." If he didn't call me in, he was in there one day a week. If he didn't call me to the office that one day, I might have went to Bieber, and I don't know where I would have been at today. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot of different breaks that I had in my life that like. I'm I'm not different from a lot of these niggas. I grew up in the same neighborhood, talk to the same girls that they talk to, like been around the same thing. So it's like I don't I don't I can't really say that like I made a better choice to anybody. I just was put in a better position to make better choices. When I, by the time I got home from school, because I went to school in South Philly or the Gamp, which is climb close to here, I by the time I got home, I couldn't do nothing that everybody else was doing. Like mm-hmm. I couldn't run the streets like everybody else. I had to go home do homework, and I wanted to play. Uh, Grant that photo, so I didn't really have time for a lot. So it's like, I don't want to say I didn't make, I did, I don't want to say like, oh yeah, I'm smarter than everybody. I made it out. I didn't. I just was put put in a different position than everybody else. And I get to be here and talking to you. Whereas like, I know niggas who would love to know a nigga who do a podcast, but don't. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I ain't different from them. I'm just in a better position, position. I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that 100 percent, honestly, because the same thing happened. You know what I mean? Like. uh I mean, I was just with my mom when I was growing up, but we lived in my grandma's house at first. I'm from Chester, Pennsylvania, you know what I mean? We we lived hella deep in the house, like all of us, my, my cousins, my uncle, all of us and shit. And uh, just at different instances, my mom kept pulling me farther away, you know what I mean, from that whole environment. Because I had, I had hella chances to do the same kind of things, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, but being taken from the types of activities I was getting into to pulled into Wilmington to like being out of the city, you know what I mean? Then then pulled from there to going to private school to being pulled farther out of that. And even still being put in that path where people were opening doors for me that other people didn't get mm-hmm. to have open because that gave me so much access and privilege. I still made some of those decisions, you know what I mean? Like I still have a record. I got to college and made those decisions because I still had needs, I still had wants, I still had desires, I still had like pressures, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And um, 
I think making those decisions in spite of privilege shows how easy it is to, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Especially when you already had access to mm-hmm. it. Because uh, if somebody already showed you a book, you got the knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Okay. I think mine falls in line with like both of these guys. Same story, kind of. Um, the only thing that differ, I guess, to me is like I think my source was my parents because they went through the shit that they didn't want me to go through. Like They both came from the hood. Um, all of my mom's relatives still there. You know, ex- were affected by the crack epidemic. I got uncles that was crackheads, aunts that was, you know, on crack, <clears throat> this, that, and the third. And I asked my mom, like, what made you different from them? She don't even know what would change. Like, she went through all of that. And I think being in the neighborhood that I grew up in, because I grew up in Overbrook Park, so it's not like I was in a socioeconomic environment where I had to deal with poverty like some of my friends had to deal with. I had to deal with a high crime rate like some of my friends did. I ain't had to deal with all of that. But... I still was around my family. I can't escape my family. I gotta go back to these mm-hmm. neighborhoods. Like I, that's where I grew up at. That's what formed me. And I think the turning point was growing up. I used to hang out with kids that were bad. Like they wasn't in the streets, but they was just bad. Mm-hmm. And my dad set me down. He's like, "You keep running with these people, you are gonna end up in prison." And me and your mom not gonna come to visit you. <laughs> and that's when I was young. I'm talking like nine, ten, eleven. So it's like, damn, I ain't gonna see y'all. So it's like shit. So like that clicked. And I look now, a lot of the people that I ran with ended up where my dad said they would. Right. My man just came home like a few months ago. I'm in a barbershop one day. It's this one boy. I went to the school with him in fifth grade. He was nerdy as shit back then. This nigga was playing ball with fucking long johns under his, his ball shorts. And I'm like, why are you doing that? He's like, I don't wear drawers at school sometimes. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, he, was, he was one of them type of people, yeah. right? So I, I see him a couple years later. <laughs> he's like... He like, he like, yo, what's up? What's up with you, man? How you been? I'm, I'm good. He, he telling everybody in the barbershop, like, yo, this nigga was the smartest person ever. He turned to me, he like, don't be like me, dog. He lifts up his pants, like, he got a fucking uh, bracelet on, mm-hmm. monitor bracelet on. I'm like, you? And I'm like, what? what? What's going on here? I think he, I just seen, he just hit me up on Facebook. He got into some shit in the streets. He paralyzed from the waist down. Mm. Facts. Shit is crazy. So it's like, I think... Being able to not like be in those environments as much and then seeing the examples and seeing people go through stuff. And I think the final thing was like, I lost my best friend when I was 18 to that shit. Mm. I had to bury somebody at 18. He didn't even graduate high school. So like that shit just really was like, all right, well, I'm not going to go down that path. If it was any chance of me ever doing it, I just was like, no, I ain't going to do it. Okay. Yeah, so... um. So, like, this whole, like, thought came from my my friend recently asking about my uncle's going life or whatever. And he recently asked, like, do you think if your uncle never went to jail for doing drug shit and, like, was still free and still at least dabbled in it, do you think he would have been more encouraged to do or whatever? And I, and I really sat back and thought about it. I was like, I think I would have. And probably like, not hell, my mom's still there. My mom. Cause I feel my main deterrence, deterrence was, was leaning my mom. Like, nigga. I'm gonna kill you for anybody else kill you and da da and you know you you know she you better than these kids don't be around them that type of shit like you know it's a superior complex so, whatever which you know in hindsight I feel even though you can say back that's kind of fucked up to say but you know well it's kind of true and like helpful <laughs> whatever but um and then my dad coming from his backgrounds and what his professions were it was like a constant thing like no this is not going to do this is going to happen you want to die go to jail no, and, I, and I always had, like, a fear of jail. Now I'm some shit like, yo, I'm going to get fucked in the ass. But it's like, dog, I don't want my liberties taken away from me. Like, that shit's never been... Yeah. Even when niggas used to, like, when he was younger, trying to be cool, I'm like, that is not cool. Like, I don't want to be in jail being some confined-ass animal cage. Like, mm-hmm. So I've always been against it. But when I was thinking about it, my uncle, like, let's say he was... Cause also, the first thought came to mind was, uh, y'all seen Spider-Verse? Yeah. Uh, not fire. Yeah. Okay. That's so good, his uncle... Like, his dad was like, yo, stay away from your uncle. He's doing certain things. So I was thinking about, like, yeah, if your uncle just out here, and you know he get into some crooked shit, of course, he ain't fucking Al Capone, but he do certain crooked shit, whatever, you probably would be just naturally drawn to it even more. Because, like, this nigga fine. Nothing happens to him crazy. Like, yeah, I'm going to start coming around him more and more and see certain things, whatever. And I was thinking, like, that could have possibly been an outcome of that, whatever. But I know that was also seeing him go to jail for life, like, very early on in my life. And seeing and the read and the way things unfolded, knowing that it wasn't always fun, how everybody just turned on. I was like, yeah, nah. And how he's, everybody was connected to him just disintegrated damn near his whole family. Oh yeah, this is a shit ain't nothing really cool about this, whatever. And I also always had the perspective of like like drugs, especially. The 
three to ten years top reign you have isn't worth your life. Mm-hmm. And that's always been crystal clear to me of like, yeah, you could be doing whatever shit you want, but like, you can like possibly die right. or go to jail. So it was like, I never got it, whatever. But then also another thought I had was like, like I said, we all come from certain environments or see certain things. I think about how unfortunate, how unfortunately that's so normal to us. Mm-hmm. Like how like, like, close calls or just like I don't know I knew the nigga then he went a certain way I went another way and the shit like happened, shit, shit happened that changes both forever mm-hmm. how like people who don't come from that have no idea and how like I said normal it is to us whatever like I swear I was one time just sitting in the studio with my homies and my homies sell weed mm-hmm. a lot of weed always had weed so I was always there cause I, I like weed I'm gonna be at the studio <laughs> I ain't rapping nothing I was just gonna be there and then one day he was selling he was like I can't really so he get a phone call he like Jordan can you go bust a check for me and I'm like yeah, he's like, you can keep the bread. I don't really need it. I just want to make sure I can keep this customer. Mm. So I'm like, all right, bad. It was down the street. I walk. He gave me his phone. The whole time his phone blowing up, getting mad news. I don't know. Junglers had to have a different life, <laughs> lifestyle than me. But I was just like, why is your phone getting news? And you're not even on the phone. Like, <laughs> you're not on with, I got your phone. Like, how you getting news? I was like, you ain't respond. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like, exactly. exactly. You put no work. And so then I'm, I'm walking to the spot. The, I, I guess I took too long because I was already fried. Get there, then then uh, the person left. I could have been selling drugs like mm-hmm. that easy. Could have been undercover. Yeah, and or something like that could have happened. I'm like that could have been that easy for me to be in a situation. And I'm like for a fraud, went back to the cribs, kept the weed, and was smoking it. And like if so, I got so many stories that like paint a a, a picture of like my lifestyle could have very easily been something different. Mm-hmm. Very easily, I could have not been in art and have been into making money in a whole different way. Mm-hmm. And like, just so many choices that I made, I keep I think back to like my brother because he did not he made the opposite decision. You know, mm-hmm. my older brother made the opposite decision. I know Cole like, speaks on that a lot. His brother's like booked or whatever, and he talks and, about. It. And it's like it's so easy. I can see it. Like I'm I was selling buttons from uh, sixteen to twenty one. That was two dollars a, a pop. I, I wish I'd have made more money. I think I could have been selling dope. Mm-hmm. That's a, you can make a lot of lot more money selling dope than you just make some <laughs> buttons. And and that's my thing is that I was always hustling. I just wasn't hustling in that way. And I I took that I took that mentality and, and put it into a whole different thing. And like it's really just about the, the the position I was put in because I didn't know anybody in my school who liked dope. I like I knew people in my school like mm-hmm. buttons. So that's what we was making. Mm-hmm. It was that simple. And, but if I went to a worse school and or, or or there was a real like oh niggas like weed. I might have been selling weed because mm-hmm. it was like I like money too, so it's a, it's about the decision that the position you put in to make the decisions you make. And I, it, I'm lucky. Right. And I thought about that a lot when I went to my high school. I went to private school from kindergarten to eighth, and I went to uh, public high school, whatever. And just see like that's supposed to be like a magnet school, or whatever mm-hmm. shit like that. But there's how many different niggas was in there mm-hmm. doing a bunch of different shit. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah, like how would I have been if I experienced this my whole life? So like these four years now <clears> after I already have like a solid foundation laid on myself and I know who I, who I am and what I want to do. Was the opposite. Okay. I was in public school all my life growing up and doing a lot of different shit that mm-hmm. was just not the same life in private school. I, I remember like the first time I really realized I was in like a fully different world because <laughs> uh, I mean there were a lot of things you know what I mean it was the first time I was really around white people mm-hmm. 100% of the time and being around white people 100% of the time if you've never been around white people it's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. This is white people fucking crazy. Every time I come and here, man. It's, it's, like, it's, it's, that's, that's, that's just how it is, man. But, um, yeah, I remember uh, two, two, two niggas I know I grew up with, played football with, played basketball with my whole life. Um, homies, you know what I mean? We was in the same grade, same class, all of that shit. And I remember they was on the news the night before. They was robbing a store. And one of them actually ended up dying, and one of them went to prison. Um, and awkwardly, like, the cop killed it. The kill, killed my mans, but... My other man's got extra time for, like, the murder. It was some, like, real fucked up, like, anti-right shit. You know what I mean? I remember the whole situation being crazy fucked up. And my, but the other boy actually just got out of prison, like, last year. It's crazy. And this happened when he was, like, 16. You know what I mean? He got charged as, as an adult and everything. So he was in state. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Fuck. And I was talking about this shit in school the next day because I was fucked up about it. I was a mm-hmm. kid. You know what I mean? I was, like, 15. Um, and I didn't really know how to think, think through it enough. So I was trying to talk to some of my friends about it. And they were so blown away by the idea that I knew people who were like robbing a store on TV mm-hmm. or I knew a nigga who got shot. I was like, yeah, my man died last night. You know what I mean? And they thought that was so wild. 
And I thought that was so normal. And they made me feel weird for thinking it was normal, you know what I mean? And I thought that that was fucked up. So then I had a whole shift in coming of age, like I'm in a different world now. But that world also opened me up to completely different circumstances, like the fact that white kids love drugs too. Mm-hmm. And I know shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? I've seen shit, my dad has done shit, my cousins have done shit, my cousins are going to jail for shit, I know what not to do, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, I don't think that going to a worse school is the, <clears throat> is the only thing that puts you in that position. I think that going to a better school can also put you in that position, because mm-hmm. it gives you higher class access. I was buying, I was, I was selling zips to people's parents for right. like $400, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like. I was making flips off of grown ass people who mm-hmm. could have turned me out. People who was fucking judges and lawyers and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like powerful people who could fuck my life over for whatever. Mm-hmm. And and I ain't even thinking about it in that way. I'm a kid. You know what I mean? I'm just like, oh shit. I'm I'm about to sell this three hundred dollars zip for four hundred to some dumbass old nigga. Like mm-hmm. fuck that shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And to whoever, linking with whoever peoples, <laughs> and just continuing that when I went on to college. And of course, that ended up in my own demise. You know what I mean? I put myself in a situation, but. Mm-hmm. I think that you can get that access from anywhere, but once your eyes open to it, like you said, your uncle just being there, mm-hmm. putting that interest in your mind because that access is there, that door is there if you want to open it. it. It just puts you in a position where it's it's a big possibility, even if you don't think you're that bull. Yeah, and I had a similar, uh, a few similar uh, situations where like seeing people get killed and shit like that, and I remember thinking how like my effect was like really numb to it, and then later on, as some years passed, I remember thinking like, yo, it's fucked up that this didn't, did, doesn't affect me more because mm-hmm. I'm surrounded by so many different things that may not be that extreme, mm-hmm. but it's like just a like a mixture of just fucked up shit that just numbs people over time. Though. But off that note, though, on a more lighter note, uh, pegging, right? Because every time I had pegging, <laughs> oh, I'm like, this you this this up to no, you know, ever since the live thing? show, I'm like. Give me this topic. Yeah. Every time I talk about pegging, Frisbee be having some thoughts. And it was the most. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me lay it out. The most recent thing of pegging was I, don't, I still don't know where it came from. A nigga was talking about they would let Rihanna peg him. Oh I, yeah, that yeah. day was hilarious on Twitter. Right. Ah. So why does that come up? I, I, yo, I, I, I didn't know where that shit I still came don't from. Know. I don't know how that. I happened. haven't traced it. <laughs> that shit was hilarious. Yeah. Of all the things I want to do, of all the things that I want to do to Rihanna. No, that yeah. I would want to you do gotta let, So you want to let her peg you? You want to let Rihanna peg you? I'm saying, you, uh, of all the would things you let her peg that you? I yes would no. want to do to yes Rihanna, no. you let her peg you, my yes having no. her peg me is very, 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 very out of the top 1,000 on that top list. 1, you know what I mean? Like, I can think of a lot of things. <laughs> I would rather hold hands. I would rather <laughs> awkwardly stare at Rihanna. No, but dead ass if Rihanna asked me. You let her peg you? I just might, bro. Like it's, it's gonna happen. Bro. Nah, she if she asked, it's gonna happen. <laughs> nah, I don't see, I, it's not I, a I yes or no situation. She's gonna tell you, like I'm, she, I'm pegging you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it's Rihanna. Rihanna. It's, it's Rihanna. Rihanna. Rihanna though. I would definitely let Rihanna peg you. It also depends on Bad my status. Girl Re. Have I reached Rihanna's status to be in this position to fuck Rihanna? Mm. If I'm on Rihanna's level, no. If I'm me right now, yeah. And I meet Rihanna I tomorrow, and I'm in that situation, and she says I'm pegging. Okay, so I still disagree, but I appreciate that perspective of it. <laughs> like, yeah, because versus right now versus well, I'm that nigga. We in different worlds right now. It's like I can see that. So back to Frisbee. Okay. She got a crash. <laughs> like, man, you came like out of South Philly as a pagan nigga? Like, come on, bro. I'm gonna throw some bills for that. Fuck her the fuck up. Yo, shut up. Me? Me? Yeah, I would definitely probably make Rihanna pay extra thinking about it. Like, Rihanna would have to give yeah. me, like, a sack. Like, yeah, you're not about to do it for free, though. <laughs> nah, 10 stacks. It's a relevant tour. I need 10. Yeah, I need something. 10 standard. Because I ain't gonna tell them about Rihanna. I'm as sick as shit she paying like, niggas just to do like, like, it. I was with Rihanna last night. Thank you. <laughs> Ten, and they will never know. a five-second video of whatever sexual interaction that we have. It don't have to be the fuck video. It gotta be proof. Like I need, I need like a lot to secure my yeah. emotional status. If, if you give me a, if I get a picture of me sucking around a titty too, you know, it's just that's perfect. You good. That's a deal. That's a fact. Perfect. Perfect. Again, disagree, but I like the perspective though. Right? I, I like the perspective. Perfect. That's hella fair. For at least general thoughts on pegging. All right. You always be like triggered. Yeah, because people always jump to it being gay, and it's not. It's no, it's not. We, we no. All, yeah, we all know what homosexuality is. Yes. Yeah. You're attracted to someone of the same sex. Yes. Anal play is a unisex thing. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Facts. So it's like, if a man want his woman to play with his butt, like, that's, there's with, nothing gay about facts. it. With a dildo. Like, yes. with, with a dildo, whatever it is, I think that people look at penetration as a as thing that women did. are only supposed to have. But that's but, what masculinity shit. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the fucked up thing about our culture. It's, you know, like, it's, it's men dominated, it's men oriented, so people walk around conditioned to believe, like, if I let a woman do that to me, 
then I'm less of a man, which is wrong. Like, I had my ass ate before. I'm not. Nigga, me too. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nothing wrong with that shit. I might want to do pregnant. I wish a bitch would talk back to me like, she ate my ass. Right. Like, okay. No, tell me. No, tell me. How are you got That's what I said. I've never been in a room with more, multiple other niggas got their ass ate. I feel comfortable in this room. This is the same space. Right on cue live. We can dress about here. You know what I'm saying? Here's what I say about it. Niggas start still. Niggas start. I beat. Still beat. Still ate. You still ate. Still ate. <laughs> but so that's why I say so yes of course just because a man you know by definition just because a man has a woman put a dill a dick shaped object in his ass doesn't make him gay by the book my theory is that if you just enjoy dick sized objects in your ass it's just a likelihood that you also want dick from a man what else is going on that doesn't that mean that, that you're gay I'm saying I'm just betting like but, like, but, like but what else is going to fit in somebody's ass, ass that isn't solid yeah. shit yeah. oh say it again what else is going to fit in the ass that isn't solid shit and this is our yeah, like you know what I'm saying what besides what like beads maybe Everything that you try to insert in somebody is going to look like a dick, no matter how. Like if, if they put the fucking mic stand in somebody, you like yo, that's it. Do like a dick. Dude look like a dick. Of course it do at that point. But I'm nah, like, and you actually, know I, I had a conversation. <laughs> I, had, I had a conversation with my girl the other day, and she kind of made a point about this. Mm. She said that men are conditioned to believe that. Like all women's sex toys have to be dick shaped. And that's I always say that. And she's like, it's not necessarily dick shaped, it's the fitting shape. It's like what's proper for what we need at that right. point. But we Doesn't think of it as a dick percent. because we use our dicks to fuck women. You know what I mean? So we automatically dick, dick assume, to, that's how sex works. But I also think of like women who I know women who've used like fruit and stuff as, as sex toys at, at some point when they were younger and stuff. And, and obviously they use like the cylindrical state stuff, so it's still dick shaped in my mind. But she was like that's your that's your male brain. Like you think right. that way, but yeah. women don't think that way. Cause cause vaginas are more like a thing. Like cause they expand, mm-hmm. like they, they yeah. deepen. So it's more so like having something to occupy that space. Nice. So that, that pleases the woman. Uh, as far as like pegging goes for men, it's all about the prostate. Like when, whenever you nut, that's your prostate doing all that work. Nice. So it's a it's a shortcut to get into that moment. I understand niggas being wary of that, so on and so forth. I'm not gonna push you to be like, all right, let me open my ass up. Like, just don't say it's gay. Like, right. niggas out that's, here, that's, like you know what I'm saying, niggas out here want to get pleased that way. That's their business. Like, let them. Like, it's not my thing, but I've never thought that that was some weird shit. Like, right, it just it's logical. Right, yeah, it makes sense. Like, you it's not me, my fault that G spots and niggas. Right, you know what I'm saying? You're telling me she can press the button that I can't get to, and I'm but, gonna deny that. Like, I don't know. But what I don't get about that argument is that. Nutting without nothing in my ass still feels good. Happens, happens, so like, but, but, but what if I told you it's different, be better? Bro, it's different. You know what I'm saying? That's not enough to intrigue you. Yeah, but, it's different. but that's the whole. But like that's the whole thing. It's like we. I like nothing without having nothing penetrate me. But I know that if somebody hit my G spot that's never been hit before, it's, it's going to be crazy. Bro, it's like the first time I, when I first started beating my dick, I beat my dick the first time. Whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. When I the first I, time I, I touched remember. my nuts, the same time I beat my dick. It was a whole different experience. And then right. the first time you got pussy? It's, then it's a whole, <laughs> whole none of those things compare, thing. you know what I'm saying? Oh, it's so, nothing was the same. It's different. So it's like, that's the logical next step. And it's like, when you... That's when, the next logical step? Like, I mean, I don't know. I mean, no, in between that, you gotta get your ass ate first. You gotta get your ass ate first, and then she has to massage your prostate, not automatically, like, go to pegging. You gotta use a smaller toy, get used to it, or her fingers. Then you go to the strap ones or something like that. That's how it's normally supposed to go. And it's like, the thing about it is, sex is one of those things where it's like, the, f- the first time you have sex is going to be crazy. The 10th time you have sex is going to be a little less crazy. But a thousand times you've had sex is like, all right, I done did this already. No, see, that's why, see, that's why this is great. <laughs> and that's why I be like, uh, having this conversation where it's like, what, ha- what type of, like, y'all niggas must be fucking fucking. Yeah. That is like, boy, yeah, yeah, like, this pussy, we, it just ain't it no more. It's yeah. ain't it. Like, I, mean, I got some experiences, my nigga. I definitely oh, need to be highly stimulated to me. It's like, once I have regular sex now, I'm like, bored. I, I'll actually come faster and have regular sex now than I will having, like, some stimulating that sex. Yeah, because it's like, I, I'll just be like, all right, so you know you more stimulated, you don't nut faster, though. Yeah, no, because now I, I, vanilla ass sex, I'm like, all right, I'm just pumping a pump. This is like masturbating. Well, it's still vanilla because, like, my standard sex is so deviated <laughs> right. from the norm. You know what I mean? Like, Back to my standard sex is What's hella, a standard session? It's like... <sighs> some niggas don't even put fingers in the butt when they fucking... Some niggas is not even on that level. I mean, the girl butt or your butt? Some niggas, girls butt. Some niggas don't eat ass. Right. Some niggas don't eat ass. Niggas don't. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, niggas don't. Uh, I don't get that. I can say it's the same space, bro. It's not safe no more.
Come on, that's no, not yeah. serious. It's like, man, y'all can talk. Y'all can talk. That's what I said. I just want you to grow up before you grow up, man. I understand y'all. It's like, I just want y'all. Don't lose what you love in the process. No, if I lost, that's There's some niggas out here that's hitting the spot that you know we're close to. But you gotta be weary of that. That's fine. It's just, it's like, all right. Valentine's Day this year, right? You got your girl with some chocolate, whatever. You did whatever you did for your girl this year. Next year, you want to go a little bit better. Next year, you might want to go up. Like, this year, you might have took her to uh, Vegas. Next year, you want to take her to Paris. You got to do that. Oh, you balling, balling. No, 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 no. <laughs> but not, not me. I do one thing. We're no, we, I just went to DC. I didn't want to DC. I ain't going nowhere. But next oh, year, all right. Next year, next year, I do want to go to somewhere better. Paris, right. But, and that's the thing is that I'm trying to please my girl in, in all the ways that I can. And this, if if I can if I can get, first off gain consent and then second make sure that we all work on the same page about right. how can I please you Facts. then that's what I'm trying to do. Exactly. That's important. Exactly. Always important. And it's like my thing is that it, love is one of those things where it's like I want to say eat every girl you meet ass. Oh, that's, not, that's, that's not that's not it. Right. Right. Or like every girl you meet advice. put put their fingers in your butt. That's, that's not, not advice. <laughs> but it's about when you, when, yeah, when you trust somebody. I think you should be taking those steps to just. At least try it, cause it won't, you might die. I'm like, damn, I ain't never ate ass. Yeah, I don't cry so much. <laughs> you're, not, you're not gonna be in heaven. Like, I think, I think, I think, I think my ass. I, yeah, I think my ass. Um, I, I feel like with that, like it depends on like it's more so like if you're in a long term relationship. Yeah, yeah Always exactly. check in with your partner to make sure that they not feeling like doing something else, cause like you get used to the routine. And I noticed that in most of my relationships, like people just. If they don't feel like comfortable enough to come to the floor mm-hmm. and be like, yo, this is what I'm thinking about, they won't say it. Mm-hmm. No, but, and I definitely feel that, but like me and my girlfriend is like, we talk about a bunch of things and right. try a bunch of things and yeah. will try a bunch of things. But it's funny that both of these ones, you know, she could be lying, she really wanna fuck me in the ass so bad. But like, <laughs> it's a certain thing that we both but agree that's like, we good. Like, it's like, you don't need that. to cross those plans. <laughs> it's like, yo, Q, like, I'm never gonna be so when bored. Y'all, when y'all talked about it, did you say you was good off it first, or did she yo, say Yo, if I ever first? even brought up, man, I had brought up, I, I joke, I like talking shit with her. Even when I joke saying, yo, like, yo, like, no, nah, like, you're not gonna eat my ass. Like, like she's like, nigga. Like, nah, it's like, <laughs> it's not a thing. Like, she ever, she's like, nigga, your prostate doesn't stay unexplored. Like, it is. And she'll say the same thing I just said. She's like, it's gonna have to end then. Like, it's gonna, <laughs> I'm not, fuck, I'm not touching your ass. It's like, I, but it's like, good that you with somebody true. that you match up with, though. Fact, like, nothing, right. nothing wrong with that. And that's, at all. that's why I said I'll be okay. If, and she's like, yo, if I'm with a girl, she's like, yo, cute, like, nah, I just really, I'm kind of bored. I really want to just play with your ass, whatever. I'm mm-hmm. like, no, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. it's okay, because it's cool. I clearly can't please you enough. That you, right. If your girl, like, say, how long y'all been together? Um, coming up four. Damn. So say, nah, I don't got to say, say in no time, but together a long time. So say tomorrow, tonight, you tonight, get home. Get home. You get home. You talk about this episode. She said, you know what, cute? You know what? I want you, I want you to eat my ass. I mean, what do oh, you want to say? Yo, to be honest, ERS, that's not beyond the room possible. All right, cool. Right, right there. I mean, it's not, the, was, it's just not my thing, but it's not like, I'm not saying it was impossible. Right. Everything else I said, that's impossible. Right. 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 Okay. But yeah, okay. Uh, moving on, all right. Uh, <laughs> we are, we went to the What's good out of What's funny about Turn that topic, is. just if we just go back real quickly, mm-hmm. it was a, um, an excerpt from like a Reddit sub column. Boy, wife was like, I want you to shit on me. He was like, no, like I'm not no. doing this. Have I'm you not... done that, Jason? No, bro. I'm Peter before. I'm not that far. <laughs> like, I would, I would. in a shower or on the bed? It's got to be in the shower. In the shower, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. I haven't done it either, but to me, I'm not impressed anymore. <laughs> I thought you said that. I thought you made it bed. Like, you ain't a freak for you, Jordan. No, I'll be on the bed. No, I'm, I'm not impressed by this story I'm not anymore. Big, I'm not like, a big backup sheet. No, but she's I'm not, Yeah, but I'm not, yeah, yeah, I'm not a big ass <laughs> person. Like, I, can, I can make it messy, but like, I ain't about to pee on my own shit. Right. Like, I got to sleep here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah like, so yeah, peeing on chicks is not some shit that I want to consistently do, but I want to do I want to try it. And I want to see what I think. The thing about it is not, it don't always feel sexual. Like, oh, sometimes I feel like, one of those things where it's like, I'm above this. It's a power. Right. It's, yeah, a, it's a, a power. Dominance, it's a dominant thing. Dominance dominance thing. thing. Yeah. And, but then when you get into this, it's like, watch well, Pete on her. Like, now you get I'm, I'm about to fall. Yeah. 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 And that's exactly what I'm So it's, 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 yeah. it's put you into a mode more so than it's a sexual act. And then once you're in that mode, it's like, oh, I can't. I'm going to go all night. Like, yeah. And you get, it's kind of you feel that power of it. And so sure. interesting. Like Where you finish her name? Just trying to Yeah, he's like, I'm not I'm not doing that. Um, she just kept, you know, going back and forth like, yeah, I want you to really do this. He's like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, he was like, he, he felt the urge. He's like, I got to take a shit. He's like, all right, let's, let's just get this done. With <laughs> She's in the tub. He squatted over. Yeah, I'm not impressed. Start dropping, right? God damn it. 
what threw him off is that he felt her like come up to eat it I, oh as it came out. God. And he just said, this part I don't get because like, it's, once it's coming out, I'm not pulling that shit back up. He, he's like, I stopped everything, ran out the room, just was done. And like, I can't look at her, nothing, so whatever. And you know, it's Reddit. So if people keep upvoting that shit, it's going to go to the front page of Reddit. <laughs> So she has a profile. He mm-hmm. thought like creating a secret joint was going to hide the post. Nigga, you post something like that, it's going to go viral. She so she's seen that shit. <laughs> so he's like, damn, we got a lunch date with uh, the, this family tomorrow. And I don't know what to say to her. I haven't spoken to her in three days. And I, I looked at it. I was like, well, I mean, I don't see nothing wrong with that. Just don't kiss me for like three months. And they had a kid too. So I was like, you can't kiss my child either. <laughs> nothing. Like, I might, like, if I'm already shitting on you and then you try to eat it, I'm. I might as well just let it go. See, I this go is my problem like, with that's this fully whole... out of the balance. No, no, I don't want to hear that shit, Jessica. Like, this whole that conversation, <laughs> Ziggy talking about why not? I had more. I'm, my standard is so deviated from the shit. Uh, no. But she can't eat your shit. Bro. That's my fucking problem with this conversation. Bro. Where does this thing? Where's the line? There's the next step. That's my line. Where do these steps end? That's my fucking line, my nigga. That's your line. It's got to be subjective. Why the fuck are you calling this crazy? I don't understand. But it is a line. I think that's the thing. There is a line. It, I would try. It. I would definitely try it. Oh, if they, I, would, if they I, ask I, me, I would do it. I would never. I, try I would it. definitely I do it. I wish my mouth could hit the floor. I <laughs> wish it could. If they ask me, I'll do it because I'm not the one getting shit on. Like you, the one getting shit on. Yeah, when you and she went eat it. Yo. You were shit on a girl that you was in a relationship with. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And, and like and like hang out with her. Like I said, she hang out with her. I got no respect for her. I got no respect for you. I can feel you have respect. I can feel you and take you to brunch. I cannot. I can pee on you. We can take a nice shower and I'll make you some breakfast. If I shit on you, you don't exist in my world. You could die tomorrow and I'm not coming to your funeral. I'm not coming to your funeral to say, oh, I want shit. But you ever did anal no. and got your dick shit on? That's another reason why I don't do anal. See, so it do happen. And you, That's still worse, happen. though, by the way. How is it worse? I'm the she's one, trying to eat shit. That's what makes it worse. I'm not getting no shit on me. I'm really, I'm I'm really not, not an anal fan, though, also. Like, I've, I've done it. Like nah, multiple man, times, I, I, nah. It's like I'm not. I don't know. I never been. I never really been into it. I I do it in moments. Like I gotta mm-hmm. be pushed to do that shit. Right. And it got. I gotta be on some like dominant high shit. Off of some doing something crazy. I thought you was a freak freak. Nah. I ain't <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, moving on though, right? Jordan. One time I saw him uh, tweet one day talking about you can't be realistic with love. Mm-hmm. I thought it was an interesting point. Uh, Expound on that. Uh, the thing about being realistic is that you gotta give your partner. You gotta have rose colored glasses because it's like when you are being too realistic. Ain't nobody perfect, a, and then ain't nobody about to live all the way up to your standards. And some and some days you gonna be mad at your girlfriend, but like if you realize that like I love this person and I, I'll I'll do anything for this person, that ain't realistic. I mean, think about it. If you think about really being with somebody for fifty years of your life to, lifetime, that ain't fucking realistic. That's hard as shit to do. That's not a that's running a fucking marathon with somebody. Like no, yeah. that's a hard ass thing to do. And if you want to do that, you gotta you gotta kind of put some blinders on and say like, all right, I'm I'm gonna love you through do everything. And I'm a, I'm I'm not about to be realistic about this. I'm gonna be romantic about this. And like that ain't always the easy thing to do because sometimes you're thinking like, man, I I I'm this type of person or she this type of person. This might not work out. But if you think like that, then right, this is not gonna work out. And it's really just about positive affirm- affirming your relationship and saying like, this is something I want to do. This is something I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do it no matter what. And of course, it's gonna get hard. And some some days you're gonna be like, one day you might be like, I don't want to do this anymore. I can't I can't overlook this. I can't. This this nigga, she tried to eat my ass while I was shitting. Like no, this that's my. You might have to be like, realistically, I can't do this no more. And that's and that's a, a point that you might hit. But I think on day to day, you can't don't always be so realistic with your love that you are blocking out good people or blocking out the love that you could be rece- receiving from somebody. Mm-hmm. Thoughts, guys? Really for that. Um. So if I understand it correctly, you're saying don't be realistic in love, be romantic. That's what yeah. you already think. Um. I don't know where I stand on that. I guess I'm kind of like in the middle because my last relationship kind of ended on me looking at things like realistically. And that's just how I am as a person. Mm-hmm. I guess I'm very neurotic when it comes to things because I'm, I'm always thinking about shit. I'm never just letting things be. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would sit there and look at my future and be like, well, you acting like this right now. If I stretch that out for the next 10 years, do I really want to deal with that? And it just started just weighing on me. And I'm talking to all my friends like, yo, what you think about this? What you think about that? And they like, well, if you feel that way, then you might as well, you know, cut it off. And me just being the way that I'm supposed to be, like the the voice in my head on one side is like, you love her. So Mm -hmm. stick it out with her. Maybe things will get better. 
But the realist in me is like, mm-hmm. nigga, if you don't get the fuck out of this, you're going to be mm-hmm. trapped with somebody that mm-hmm. not doing what you need somebody to do. Mm-hmm. And I was already in a relationship prior to that that kind of like got me there and I lost so much because I decided to invest in love rather than mm-hmm. investing in reality. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? Um, so I, I'm kind of in the middle. It's like I'm at this point right now where I was just talking to this girl. I'm like, I'm at the point where I want to find my wife. Like, I don't want to date around with nobody. Like, I, I've been through all the shit. I know what the person that she I choose to date with. with uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I need somebody to share this dookie with. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, like, but, like, I know what I'm looking for now. So when it comes to that point, I won't never be second guessing because I know that person got it because I already vetted them. I didn't jump into it. I all my relationships I jumped in super romantic. That's that's how I am with everything. Everybody I love if I love you, I love you from the rip from the mm-hmm. beginning. And it fucks me up, so I gotta be like, all right, let me try a different approach. So I agree with you, but I wanna try things out and then I'll figure it out. Yeah, and it's funny, I always come that especially when I talk to like older couples, right? Cause like the notion is always like, yeah, like shit gonna get hard, you gotta figure it out and go through the storm. <laughs> and I was thinking like but is that the right way? Like, should it be like a sense of like, like what, how hard, I mean, like no pun intended, like how hard is too hard? Mm-hmm. Like, shouldn't it be like a sense of like, you're like, we kind of just work. Of course, everything is going to be roses and shit through right. forever. But like, shouldn't we kind of work to a certain sense where shit don't get off too far off the rail? But it seems like people are like, no, like, eventually shit going to just, blah. <laughs> but if you, but if, it, if it's real, y'all going to come back. And be good. They don't want the rose again. Tommy, I always go back and forth from like what I think is like the true uh, image or definition of like love and commitment. Like, is it like we don't have to work too crazy hard? Or like, no, like prepare for like the hard time and then just weather through it. And like, this, what is it after that? I feel like you should definitely feel in sync more often than not. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's it's a logical to think that you won't get to a point where you are on opposite sides of any spectrum because I mean we, we grow and we mm-hmm. change so much like if you think about two years ago every two years ago you know what I mean like you can think about so many different kinds of decisions you were making in different places you were different ways you were thinking so I can't imagine who I'm going to be in 20 years 30 years 40 years 50 years you know what I mean I just had no control over that and what I'm going to be thinking and what my partner's going to be thinking and how I'm going to feel about those things you know what I mean it's just not um, right so then you be like, like all right so we at these spectrums we not here no more. I think let you gotta it go. Or enough, is it like you gotta give enough fucks to want to come back together? Mm-hmm. And I guess you gotta see how you feel at each junction like that. But I and like in my current situation, I always feel like I'm gonna feel like coming back together. You know what I mean? No matter what's going on, um, and always wanting to work for that is part of what love is. I think the unconditional need to uh, repair or desire to repair, regardless of what has broken you down, and like not having been broken down so much <laughs> that you don't have that anymore. But I think that rose-colored love is a real double-edged sword because mm-hmm. um, I feel that way. Like mm-hmm. I, feel, I really felt that when you said it because I feel like I've moved that way so mm-hmm. for so long. Um, and I think I think I moved that way in my current situation, you know what I mean? Like I, I'm such an aggressive, I care for you person, you know what I mean? I will go out of my way at all times and that's just who I am. And I'm a thinker that way, like I'll think of new ways to go out of my way. Um, <clears throat> but I also think that in my, like my last long-term relationship, I think I had, I was too rose colored and I was so unrealistic that I never even thought of the possibilities of it ending or I never thought of the possibilities of outside of us, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because I'm a very like, we'll win regardless type of person. Mm-hmm. I will figure it out type of person. Mm-hmm. And that has worked for me because in my current situation, we do, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's just always, we figure it out because mm-hmm. love or, you know what I mean? The power of it. Um, but that doesn't always work, especially if you're not with another person who feels that way. I think the mm-hmm. key to rose color love or rose glass love two is that ways. it's two ways. Y'all both have to be either looking through those glasses together or both have a pair. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, uh, you know, somebody's left out. Gotcha. And I'm a big proponent of like, one thing I was living by now, I've kind of been moving away from it, is that like, love is a choice. Yes. But you gotta choose love every single day. Like you can't, it, cause the big thing is that you're not always gonna feel like loving the person you wanna love. Like mm-hmm. you ain't always gonna feel it. But if you choosing to love this person every day, you you making that choice. You making it. You putting it in your hands. You making it your responsibility to say I'm choosing love today. And a lot of people don't realize that they think that like love is something you are gonna feel every day. And like that's not realistic. That's what I'm saying. You gotta, you gotta. You have to think of it like, I, if I'm choosing love every day, then I'm going to feel like love every day. I'm telling myself I'm going to feel this love every day. And it's like, 
it's again not realistic, but it's very much like how love continues and how love goes on. Because it's like some days it's gonna be hard as fuck to love a person who didn't watch this last night or didn't come home the time they say we will come home or <laughs> left the microwave on high. Like all the all the shit the microwave on high. All the shit that you don't like that they, they, they might have did everything uh, that that day before. <laughs> they might have did everything they like the day before, but the next day if you say I'm choosing love. Then that next day is gonna be a lot easier than if you say, "Man, I don't, hopefully they don't leave the microwave on." Hopefully they don't, and it's like that's that's dreadful. I don't like living life dreadful, so that's why I choose love, and every day I choose love, and I put on, put on my rose colored glasses when, when I'm loving my girlfriend because like that's the way I'm I'm deciding to love her, you know? Because I'm not gonna love her halfway and then realize that like I was giving fifty percent for two three months out of relationship yeah. trying to figure out why because I ain't feel it. Well, I ain't choose to feel it. I ain't choose love every day. It's more important to choose somebody who's going to choose you every day than mm-hmm. it is to choose somebody that you can choose every day. Because I, like, I've like i never had what I have now mm-hmm. in a woman who consistently, no matter what, because I, I can be an asshole sometimes, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I'm real bullheaded in that way. So I never had somebody who consistently just wake up and choose me. Mm-hmm. And, you know what I mean? and that's hard. That's that's really hard for anybody to do. Yeah. So um, you know I, mean? I work to do that myself as well. Okay. Do y'all feel bisexual uh, bisexual men are marginalized? What do you mean by marginalized? What do you mean? Like, what do you, marginalized what do you, what do you, what do you on, on the what level of what? Yeah, that's that's what like I, like are you talking you about as, as much as as much as homosexual men or what just are any marginalized group? Period. Bisexual men, I don't actually. I, 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 I don't no, so this, this is a question. Right. So I see a lot. I think that I saw people talking about it one day or I was in a conversation where they was like, "Yo, like the whole the whole uh um." The pagan thing, right? right? So in that in that situation, in that conversation, you can have men like, yeah, like I think that shit gay, or I should not be with it. But also the flip side of it is like you have women also, or like even I remember on insecure mm-hmm. when she uh, date the bisexual, yeah, the bi- he's like, yeah, I did it one yeah. time, or whatever. So it seems like it's like a like it's a stigma. It's a stigma, and it's even more heightened than against women, because you know, right. of course, women don't care about doing gay shit or whatever, and men don't care about women doing gay shit, but like with men. Yeah, I actually have really, really strong feelings about that, because I, I just had a, <laughs> I had a very serious falling out with my family members over the holiday time, and I got into a really serious debate. I've, I've, I've been a big proponent of people having to stand up in situations of discomfort yeah. mm-hmm. with their family, like we got to force these uncomfortable situations, because mm-hmm. people slide by their whole lives mm-hmm. without being checked on mm-hmm. little microaggressive shit, mm-hmm. and somebody has to be there to just be like, no, you know what I mean, just stop. Um, even if that causes discomfort to the point where those people detract. Um, and I did that, you know what I mean? I, I interjected myself in a situation where basically they were having that conversation, validating the bisexuality of women, but degrading the bisexuality of men, saying that they, like, you know, I mean, these niggas faggots, you know what I mean? Like, if you fucking man, you gay, my nigga. If you like men, you gay. It don't matter if you fuck girl. And, and that's, it's so illogical that it's hard for me to even acknowledge it, but I have to. I have to step to that level, stoop to that level. I have to say it like that. I really have to jump down into a dumbass dickhead bag and be like, really think about how stupid it is what you're saying, you know what I mean? Like, to look at it through such a male lens, you can only see the virtue in women, that you can only see the the switch ability in women is, it's only because you have a dick, my nigga. You imagine women kissing well, women your whole life. Though. Women but do that shit a lot. Women do that shit too, but I think that internalized misogyny happens. Like, yeah, our world's been like this for a long time, and men are not the only people that are propping up a system of patriarchal right, bullshit. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, women I, are most I agree, but I was wondering when you. Like, like, men are so you're saying we do it because we got to swing it there. And they are ingrained in the system. Yeah, I, and I, I'm, not call, I'm not saying anybody is like unable to take responsibility for that. I'm saying that niggas have to take responsibility for the fact that they are only looking at women with the ability to switch around in that way. But men can do the exact same thing. Like if a man decides that he is sexually attracted to another man, he's not deciding that. He is that way. It's not it's not like a nigga is waking up and is like, I'm gonna go be a marginalized group member today. Like mm-hmm. I never no, understood that, like, why that would logic. Why would somebody up wake up and be like, I want to make my life harder? I want to make sense. my life hard today. I'm going like, to go announce that I also like niggas. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, bro. Some Like, it doesn't make any sense. And I always ask people to really just think to the simplest thing. Think about the first time you liked a girl. I feel like everybody can remember Nobody that. Nobody told. The first time happened. you liked a girl. You, That's what I say to everybody. Just, just had my bro, dick out. I ain't know what the fuck was happening. I just remember okay. shit. But flip side of it, right? What about the girls who engage in whatever type of gay shit they're doing and then like, I'm not gay or I'm not bisexual. I'm not anything. 
That's that's a that's a it's thing valid. though. Like it's valid. Valid. You, it's you, valid. You it's gotta valid. destroy the binary. And queer it's is not, it's not okay. Right, so to me, that's a different point than what what Jizza was saying. Because like you saying, no one just wakes up and say, oh, "I just want to do this" or whatever. You saying it's an organic attraction, but. I think the curiosity is very natural. And yeah. I think that some people will fight that curiosity more than others. Mm -hmm. But the curiosity itself is natural. Like right. It's like you think of random shit. Like sometimes when I'm standing on the edge of a tall building, I'm like, what if I jumped off this bitch? Right. Like, all like, the time. I, and that, that's, that's like a specific name for people who think of like ways to kill themselves mm -hmm. in situations like that. But right. in general, I think people, uh, you can think of like hella shit that you would do mm -hmm. that doesn't make any sense. You know what I mean? So I think that people will fight urges like that and accept urges like that. But more importantly, uh, you just have to be willing to, I don't know, I guess accept what you're thinking. And that's the thing about uh, misogyny is that it's mad trash. Like, yeah. it's like, it's not just trash for, it's not just trash for, <laughs> uh, it's not just trash for women who get uh, more, uh, oppressed. It's trash for men. It's like, Lil Uzi can't do shit. Lil Uzi can't do without nothing. But I'll be called, but I'll be called any type of name. Look, young Doug can't do nothing. And it's like, that is the reason why misogyny is, is trash, not just for women. It's trash yeah. for men as well, because we don't get the opportunity they to can't decide. can't express themselves. Yeah, we don't get the opportunity to decide. They're like, today I want to be soft. Today I want to cry. You know how many times I felt wrong for crying because I'm a man? Fact. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not just about wanting to, it's not just like, oh, I'm bisexual. It's like, yo, I want to, James Smith is like, I want to wear a dress today. Why the fuck not? Why, yeah, yeah, like, why do you care about that? Mad niggas was like, this nigga a faggot. My dad hated that shit. My dad was like, niggas changing out here, bro. Like, it's shit weird these days. Like, it's not, it's like, not no, weird and it's not new. It's not, it's, it's it's not, not new, like, yeah. No, nothing about this is new. It's not new at all. The it's Greeks, right. as fucked up as right. they were, like was totally free. Like just everything was everything. Like sexuality is a spectrum. It's not it's never like a black or white thing. So like to your question of like women that play whatever, they do men, women, but they say like I don't identify any specific type of way, that, that, that's valid. Do whatever you want. You don't have to be like, I'm just this. You might not. It's people that don't want to have sex, period, mm, in gosh. this world. And nobody nobody looks at that like that's weird. But I mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, I, like, I, I had a friend like that, like all growing up. She, right. like, I just want everything, and she's still that way. And I had like a, like a not a very hard time dealing with that as in I was trying to get out of her or right. something like that. But I watched a lot of interactions yeah. with her and men expecting something to happen. You know what right. I mean? And she just and not there for it. Right. So eventually, I just had to ask, you know what I mean? And it's it's not that complicated. Mm -hmm. In any it's situation, not. just ask the question. Right. You know what I mean? And we all, you can learn. Like we were talking, like, we all got our lines. Yes. We all have our lines. So it's like, some days I might want to kiss a nigga. Some days I might not. And I, I identify as a straight man because that's how I feel most days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just that if I decide that I kiss a nigga, then I don't want to kiss a nigga ever again. I'm not gay for that. But I'm, many niggas will be like, you're now gay for Yeah, us. and it's like, like no, no, I just, I'm just, I'm just walking this line in my life. Why is he gay forever? Because because we're, why, you're saying why is he not gay forever? He's not gay forever because he doesn't identify as a man who is attracted yeah. sexually to other men, and that's what it. So even though he had the thought to just do it, that's not what I, he identifies. Yeah, it's about what right. So he, he, that's why I'm still. I like right. your point of the, the non binary uh, binary thing, just kind of erasing all things. It's just a spectrum. Right. You can say what the fuck you want. You can call yourself whatever the fuck you want to call yourself. Right. But. If you have the thought, the curiosity, or attraction, or whatever it was, or the instinct to do it, that's it. That's is all that it not is. what it's, it is? It's, 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 I think it's nature. Yeah. Because humans aren't. I don't think humans are born just to go in one direction. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's like it could be as small as like you see a nigga and you look at his face. You're like, oh, he got a nice looking face. That don't mean that I'm attracted to him all because right. we can always. You know, see it. I'm, I'm saying. So, I think good looking nigga. Right. Ugly nigga. Like yeah. everybody. Everybody can see that. That don't. But there's niggas out there that won't let that thought enter their mind because they'd be like, oh, I'm gay if I think that way. Mm -hmm. Nah, that no, thought still like, enters their mind, mind but they fully they reject it. They're right. not enraged by it. Exactly. Like, How so, dare I think this gay ass shit? Exactly. They gotta punch their dick right. or something. Niggas gotta relax. <laughs> and, 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 and we care so much about labels. Right. We give so much to labels in, 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 this, in this society that's like, it don't matter. And, and, that, and that's where I'm at at this point. And it's funny because, you know, you, you would know, but because of the whole Afro-Latina thing, I'd arrive at the place of like, cause like when I when I see people, uh, just um like calling themselves black and you know realizing, learning and realizing that's like a whole thing and we know we have two interpretations or understanding what black is. But in the day, it's like I just don't give a fuck. Like you call yourself black, where we you call yourself black, that's fine. It's a spectrum, whatever shit like that, whatever. So I look at the same with like sexuality. It's like. If a nigga want to call himself gay, or he want to do what the fuck he want, whatever. Cause also, I never been a person. I never uh, been like, oh. Uh, those uh, aren't the same things, huh? I don't. I don't think that the 
comparison that you're making is illogical, but I don't think those are the same things because race is a social construct that doesn't yeah. exist, yeah, and sexuality is a physical, biological attraction. You know what I mean? Like that exists in a real space, in real time, and race doesn't exist at all. And people well, are literally making themselves. Okay, like, I think okay. that's fair, but I'm just looking at it as like end of the day. You can call yourself what you're gonna call yourself. That's a, I feel that's the place we're going yeah, at. It's yeah. going no lines, no boundaries, no labels. People just living like what the fuck they right. want to do, whatever. Same way people are calling themselves whatever race they want to call themselves. It is something that's made up. And, 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 and of course, they may be from different uh, origins, or whatever. But like, if someone wake up tomorrow and say, you know what, I'm transracial today, they ain't gonna call themselves so fucking transracial, whatever. Versus someone say, if I just want to kiss a nigga today, yeah. and I'm still, you can't call me whatever the fuck you want to call me. I'm still who I'm going. I'm still who I am. That's how I. Call. Still different, but still like it's like the same space, mm, and I just choose to look at it that way because right. like Cause, I don't even care to even debate labels. Like it's like that's your life. I don't like men. You can't feel Ugh. black. Like you can't feel black because black is not a thing. Black is my skin color. Like yeah. black, you could like that's cool. He he could do every everything black person might have your skin color, but he could do everything I'm doing and say, oh, I feel black, but it's not. That's not a, a black feeling. It's you feel you are feeling like a person. You can want to do the same things I want to do with your same with your white skin color. I don't. It's not black is not a thing. It's my skin color. Like that's it. That's all it is. It's, but being a sexual orientation, that is more than a feeling. I mean, that's more than a than my skin color. That's a feeling that I have. That's not what I'm predetermined if, before I even get here to be. Like that's that's predetermined. Whereas like my skin color is like really just all the things that society plays on me because of this. So every curiosity that someone like you said, we talked about a lot of different examples here of people just lack of better term acting out and whatever they want to do in such in, in a sexual space. That's all just preordained for the guy here? Like, had nothing to do with why they're here? It's, it's human nature. Like, yeah. anything, like, you there, you just, like, it's there. You come, in, come into this world, all of that, all of those possibilities are there for you. As you grow, as you get conditioned, as you, whatever society you grow up in, it, it comes, it really comes with what type of society you grow up in, right. how it's oriented. Um, if you grow up in a society that's more geared towards feminine energy, you might come out and be more disposed to be like, all right, well, I want to, you know, play into that. Mm -hmm. um, but all those possibilities are there when you're born. So it's like if you see somebody doing that, it's just that's the natural course that they was going to take, period. It was already written. You know what I'm saying? They made that choice because all of that was presented, you know, to them. They're like, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that because something inside of me is, is telling me. I need to do that, or I want to do that. I feel like doing that. They gave into it. It's not more. It's not like I don't. I don't know. It's not like you. You walk into like McDonald's or something, and the menu's there, and you picked it. You walked out like with a Big Mac, and that's it. That's all you got is a Big Mac. It's more so like you go to the buffet. Everything there, you put everything on your plate. You can do whatever you want. It's mm -hmm. already there for you. It's like like hip hop, hip hop music. I'm. It's not because I'm black to like hip hop music. It's that I like hip hop music. You can be any race and like hip hop music. No matter which where you come from, you can like hip hop music. And you can like all kinds of hip hop music. Yeah, and like I don't like country music. I think that's because in my in my jeans, nobody in my jeans ever like country music. You think that's why? Yeah. I don't think that's it. No, because, 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 no, because, <laughs> because think about it. I heard some country music that slept. Not gonna lie, I, I like that joint with Nelly. That joint was fire. Over and over. Yeah, yeah, that's my shit. But like that's because I the way that it was made, I like the way it was made. But that's not. That's not like, oh, I'm black, so I gotta like Nelly. No, I like the song. It's, I, I like, uh, what's that? Uh, hey, like little the, hey, little Delilah. Hey, Delilah. That's like a white person Cowboy song. Casanova, that country song. See, that's, that's not because you yeah, because you boy. white. It's because you like that type of song. It's that not because that's right. <laughs> some some songs slap just because that you feel that they slap, and that's how sexuality is. It's like. I'm, I, I feel like kissing a nigga might slap today. Bitch, eat my ass. I was like, bitch, that's slap. That's just slap. That doesn't make me anything but. Run that shit back, Turbo. Thanks. <laughs> 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 Some shit just slap for you. And it's like, you don't have to be a thing to for it to slap for you. You are a person. And I think right. that's what we forget in this whole thing is that we are all human. Right. We are all just fucking humans trying to figure out how the fuck to do this shit every single day. But yeah, a lot of people follow the rules. A lot of people are like, I'm a man, so I do this. I'm black, so I do this. I'm uh, I work here, so I do this type of stuff. Or I went to this type of school, so I did do this type of stuff. We're not fucking serfs. We're not indebted to the lives of our parents or some shit exactly. because of our genes. Like, I don't have to do nigga shit because right. I'm a nigga. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have to wear dreads because, like, I'm just doing what I like to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but just one last question. So to put a button on it. Huh. <laughs> but like, so would y'all say? It has nothing to do, because it seems like you kind of alluded to it, but it has nothing to do with societal, not pressures, like influence. It's all about just 
Cause you said you talking about your DNA, your gene. That's why you like country music. So it's like all before, or is it once you get here and you see certain shit going certain ways, or you see certain influence or this and that's like okay, like I think certain, or is it everything just instinctive or whatever not, out of your control? Everything. I think, you, I think things enough. get triggered maybe because yeah. like it's, maybe it's lying dormant, right? Mm -hmm. And you need the right things in your environment mm -hmm. to you know pick up on that. So it's like. You can go your whole life being undecided on like which way you turn, but you see something and it's like, oh, okay, bet. Cause like I follow this one artist, he's gay. He was saying like uh, the first time, actually, you know, the skateboarder, he was saying the first time he realized he was gay, he was watching a cartoon and the male character stood out to him. It was like the jawline. He was like, why do I like that? Like it's weird. It's, it's a cartoon, but it's a representation of a man. Mm -hmm. So that's how he was like, oh shit. That's, that's how I'm, uh, that's how I'm rocking. Yeah, so yeah, I think it's that those yeah. things are there. Yeah. Okay. It's I'm just really once you come yeah. into contact mm -hmm. with something in your environment that wakes it up, yeah. that's where you take action on it or not. It's up to you. Everything's also a possibility to it. I do think that everybody's experiences lead them to different things. And right. all your experiences are a culmination of what makes you who you are. So right. like, I don't know, different things can send you down different paths. Right, exactly. Yeah. Um, I forgot to ask this thing when you were talking about the whole sex or whatever. Uh, y'all like uh, masturbating together? Like with a group? With the girl. Oh, like, all three of us? <laughs> like right now, y'all first time meeting me. Y'all y'all spectrum? Y'all y'all, I thought y'all were all three. Alright, all right, that, that might be my line. That's your line? Jacking off with two other men in the room? That's it? That's it? Four other niggas in the room. Five. Um, no, I, 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 I've, I've done mutual masturbation or some uh, or some karmic energy shit. Actually, it was like a mm. like a dual breathing exercise. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, and it was, it was not touching each other. It was, it was like torture, watching almost, each other. That sounds like religious. torturous, but enlightening at the same time. So That's you were hilarious. sitting there, literally sharing the same breath, going back and forth while like mutually masturbating, but not touching each other whatsoever. You were only linked in the way. That's a lot of energy, but not touching. How long is left? So you remember? Like forty-five minutes. That's lit as hell. Interesting. Put that in my book. Niggas was just like, <laughs> did y'all fuck after this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, nigga, that shit was crazy. How about you? Super crazy. Oh, y'all. Uh, yeah, I would definitely be with it. But I'm, you never did it on next time? No, it was. So we got this board game, and the board game was just like, record your partner masturbating for two minutes. And the I wasn't. What fuck board game is this? It was a lit ass board game. It was called Me and You. I got it from the sex shop called Big One in New York. <laughs> it's, it's a lit ass sex shop, but. And it was just like two minutes, but I wasn't not, not about to play in my day while you like, but I was recording, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So it wasn't like, it was really supposed to be. That just, wasn't the task. Yeah, <laughs> it happened, but it wasn't like tantrum like that. Like, I, I it wasn't sharing the same breath. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I've done it before. I just like, I walked in the room one morning and she was already at it. So I was like, well, shit, this look good to me. So I kind of just stood like next to her and, you know, just did it. It wasn't like, I don't know. It wasn't like, oh, I'm jacking off because you jacking. Well, you you know, you know, you flicking the bean or whatever. It was more so like sharing that energy that was already there. That that was kind of cool. So it was like, yeah. How about y'all touching each other, not yourself, though? Um, yeah, I, I kind of So like she jerked you up, but you playing with her. Yeah, that's yeah. What that's I was like doing kind of like, That's like that. six nine. Yeah. 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 So the whole, how did y'all, how did you guys feel? Yo, just in the space you are today, a lot of people are like really impressed by the whole Dreamville shit, right? And it made me think like, I thought it was cool. Like, not you, Joe? It was very good. But the Dreamville sessions? Yeah. The, the gold yeah. ticket. Oh, yeah, gold I think, yeah, I think it was good marketing strategy. I thought it was, it was a great day, to, a great way to captivate interest right. around. You got some shade, the Jordan. It just, for me, felt corny. Mm. Like, I, my, my thing would have been like, let's capture this. Let me invite everybody. If you put it out there, you put it out there. Mm. But I think it was made that you put out there, and I think it made it more like, all the times I saw fake... Put, niggas put the fake drones up, like it wasn't, they didn't actually get invited, but they put up fake ones, mm. and you ain't go. You just you just got invited, and it's like, I like what I really enjoyed was seeing the, the pictures from the studio. Right, and actually talk work, about it. Yeah, actually yeah. seeing the work getting done. I wish they streamed it or something. Yeah, like so I wish I I would have I would actually like seeing the work get done because I'm I'm a I'm very against niggas saying let's collab. I'm very against like yo let nigga let's work. Like, I'm not with that. Right, because I have pull niggas, up. Niggas we, we, yeah, we, yeah, niggas don't be working, and that's a, that was a big thing is that if you couldn't go and you still posted this drone. That's a moot point for me. It, it made it less cool for me. But when I seen the pictures of, of uh, Monty Booker being there, Smino going, like, niggas really going to the studio, Rick Ross being there, that's cool to me. But the actual ticket idea, it, like I said, it did generate inter interest. It did uh, 
built hype about the album. I don't know when the album coming out. I don't know. I don't. I don't it's know. supposed to be like this, like this spring or some shit. So I, that it did do that for people, but for me it was just like, mm, I, I would like Tina working on that. That kind of strikes a note with me because although I, I really love the idea, I love the the marketing strategy as far as getting people to care about whatever they got going on and to pay attention to the artists that they have in their collective because mm-hmm. they got a really great collective. Um, what I didn't like was I thought way too many people got invited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was so oversaturated. I was yeah. like, every semi-relevant artist yeah. has one of these golden tickets. And I was just like... That's why I took it as just like... are you at this point? That's why I took it as just like a networking event. And of course, it makes it less organic, but it's like... It's just a rock brunch or y'all make Yeah, it's a rock nation yeah. brunch. Because yeah. like, I know all y'all gonna be on this project, exactly. but y'all can work on... I think by then I thought it was cool that yeah, y'all can work on albums. other songs yeah. and other yeah. albums and maybe do collabs you never would have just gotten a chance to or thought about doing. That's why I thought... It was like, all right, this is kind of weird, but still kind of cool, and, and like, in, in the grand scheme of things, because when the fuck is Rick Ross gonna ever be around any of these niggas for real, for real? Mm-hmm. So I was like, you know, and, yeah. I, and that's what I think it was cool. Seeing Rick Ross in the studio was cool to me because it's like, I imagine all the niggas who would have never got to meet Rick Ross without, right. without Jim, Jimville, right? Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, if I'm if I'm J Cole running Dreamville, I'm not inviting niggas who could out rap the niggas on Dreamville. I'm not inviting Miss Staples yeah. to my to my shit. I'm inviting dope ass producers. I'm not inviting Smino. Niggas are not some niggas who gonna outrap JID and niggas like niggas like that. Mm-hmm. It's not coming to my drum because you're not about to outrap my niggas and then Nothing everybody's talking about chippers. Exactly. Once Sabo come in the room, I'm not I'm not listening to JID. I like JID a little bit, but, but I'm not listening to yeah. Sabo there. Don't exactly. even mention them other niggas. Don't talk about Earth Gang like that. We can I was talk about Boss and Claude. Oh, all right. Really. I, I, didn't I don't like Earth Gang like that. I don't understand. Earth Gang is fantastic. I think Boss is yeah. overrated, though. I, 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 I didn't think he was rated. <laughs> nah, nah, people, 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 and people who like Dreamville like Boss a lot. And I get Boss a lot. Of, was pretty cool. I get a lot of Dreamville people who really push Boss to me. And I thought his album was okay, uh, but I was kind of bored. I, I gotta check out Earth Gang more. I haven't. I, I don't I have an opinion like on them yet. They gotta like Earth Gang. JID is not it to me. Really? Yeah, he is pretty good. I'm niggas, surprised niggas, that niggas can't have j- this JID album be what they made their sample with JID. Like, mm-hmm. go listen to like Never Story or some shit. Mm-hmm. Go listen to DiCaprio One. Don't listen mm-hmm. to like I thought DiCaprio Two was trash. I mm-hmm. thought it was whack. Like, I thought it was a, a bunch of good songs. It sounded like a fucking awkwardly put together mixtape. Right, right, it did right. sound like a good cohesive album. I never wanted to listen to it again after I heard it. And I was, I was like, mad disappointed because I'm a big J.I.D. fan. I like, I think he's great. You was he uh, I didn't understand the point of all of the invitations. Because from the outside looking in, I was like, how are you going to fit all these people in that, right. like, that time frame? Um, but I thought that as a marketing scheme, it was yeah. good. It did well to, you know, draw interest in the project overall. Um, the other thing I didn't get was like, is this a showcase for Dreamville or is this just <laughs> exactly. everybody exactly. that you know in the industry coming together? Because it's like, 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 us, like you said, don't invite nobody there that's going to outwrap my my squad. Yeah. This Staples is a bigger draw on any track than any nigga on Dreamville. I'm not listening to that Even track Jay because Cole. the nigga on Dreamville. Right. I'm listening right. to this. Yeah, that's funny. Niggas talk about Cole fe- feature Cole feature Staples. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Feature Cole though. Of course, of course. But I'm just saying, though, but like, definitely, that's what Staples, that's, I've always loved this. Because I'm, 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 not, I'm not going to get into the whole t- uh, debate, but I haven't loved Staples as much as I did in previous projects. <sighs> you like him? That film is decent. He, he he nope. like a lot of big people ain't like Big, big Fish, and I don't get it. That shit is hot. I think Big Staples, for me, is like, I don't listen to Big Staples every day, but I can really appreciate Big Staples. Like, Stolen Youth, Big Staples. Mm-hmm. From so Sean Cole Cold Chain too to me too is like okay, his okay, best project. Winter in yeah. Prague, all of that yeah, shit. Yeah, uh, been hot. I think back when he was in, but that's oh, something with Sixteen. That shit yeah, is something else, man. Something I feel like I'm watching a movie. I even yeah. like Prima Donna, but since yeah. Prima Donna. I like I I I think I, I had a thread on that because it's like I think a lot of people are like. They don't like Vince because of his beat selection. Same thing with Nas. Like people are like, oh well, Nas doesn't have a really good nice air, air for beats. Nas got better beats than Vince. This nigga's true. Nas got better beats than Vince. We're not gonna convince him otherwise. We're not gonna convince him. Hey, but Nas, I'm glad we brought up music. I'm about to talk. I got, I got another bisexual topic. I forgot to bring up. But before I get to that, though, I don't even know where we going. I want you to admit that you was wrong, nigga, about Victory Lap. Cause great, I know you like Key. I know he. Y'all both like Key Project. That shit, fam, I don't get into it, but you was like, no, Q, watching all these lists come out, you're going to see Key get way more praise and attention than Victory Lap. Nah, 777 should be getting as much praise as he's getting. Victory Lap should I mean, be victory getting lap. on everybody. And Victory Lap was. Yeah. Key was nowhere near in the top. Like uh, that's cool. I'm not going to debate it. I just want him to admit, 
that he was wrong. He I, said I, I love. He was trying to say list. consensus was he was going to be top. I love seven seven seven. I did like all three are the same nigga. That's why I brought you all together. I didn't agree. So fuck all y'all. Because that shit. I like seven seven seven. Niggas just was tough. Trying to boost it a little too much. It was boosted. It was boosted. Yo, can you? No, no. I I put it. I put it higher than Saba. Saba had the best album here, bro. Saba won. It's not close. It's not close. It's not close. JPEG Mafia has something. No, no, JPEG Mafia shit. No, he's not even top five. No, JPEG Mafia. Better was pretty good. Better was. Better was. I give a lot of really strong albums. Yeah, there was. A lot. But Saba is one. Saba is one. Saba is one. I still can't. I I think I had it. I had a seven 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 Saba and then JPEG Mafia. Those seven 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 in my top seven. Niggas got a top five. I'm not standing. Mm, J Big Mafia didn't make my top five last year. Me what? Not my top ten. That nigga snapped from beginning to end. I really like Whole Foods. I like Whole Foods, and then I skip a lot of those tracks on the album. Damn. First, Any album with skips can't can't yeah. touch my top. Yeah, five, my that's top wild. ten in 2018. No, Victory Lab had a lot of skips. Victory Lab doesn't have skips. Victory Lab does Victory Lab does not have skips to me. I Meek, actually Meek album got the whole album. Even niggas wanted to be top ten. Of course they had skips. Who? Who? Meek got like three skips. I don't three know. The, it, it's it, three it, tops. Three tops. Three. Y'all yeah, got that's, relax. That's, that's not a front to back album. Y'all got to relax. It's not. I think they're going to make the a front to back album. The thing about right. me. Thank you. Somebody said it. The thing about me, though. The thing about me. I love it. But yeah. No, niggas don't be admitting that shit, though. Niggas want me to win so bad. But going bad is good as three songs. Exactly. Going bad is so good that it's like three songs. Going bad is is Drake featuring Drake, like Drake said. That's right. No, but of course, but like. Yeah, that counts. I, I paid for that. I, I just want. I just want. If they was gonna do the collab again, do a collab. Man. No, a collab on the track. I don't need Drake featuring Drake on a Meek album. I need a Meek album. I need a real Meek album. I need a whole Meek. It top to meat bottom album. Yo, but to me, wins and losses and championships are closest as Meek is ever going to get. No, he can get to a so ten. So no, I think I think wins and losses was the perfect formula. Yeah, definitely. I, I don't. No, I don't the, know, the, man. What they were going I gotta for think about is it. What I think no, the last, the last three. I think the last three. I don't listen to that because it felt like he threw it in after the the dream what? track. The, after the dream track, I mean from nothing. Duh, I'm sorry. After the dream Christ? track, cut it. Just cut it after that track, bro. Cut it after that track. Left Hollywood bonus track. They might be good somewhere else, but not on that album. Not there. <laughs> man, fuck all y'all, man. I'm sorry, all y'all. Move, move, move. That was a good song. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's on the end. Somebody said me, said me. Anyway, man, anyway, move the fuck on. Um, so recently I had, a, I had a tweet, right, about bisexual women. Mm-hmm. I thought it was very sensible. Probably wasn't. I said. I, I saw that joke yeah, too. I, that. <laughs> I totally understand that bisexual doesn't mean, a woman being bisexual doesn't mean she has to be into threesomes. But I can understand how that could be kind of corny, knowing that your woman is into woman, but doesn't want to be into woman with you. The thought stemmed from Joe Budden, knowing, because he said he was Sin Santana, who, of course, was an Erica Men before that. And he like, yeah, like, she was going to be the shit. And he was joking about whatever. I was thinking, like, damn, like, that would be kind of just corny to think about whatever. Now, that doesn't mean he got to break up with her or say, bitch, you better give me three, so I'm going to smack you. But it's like, yeah, I think that would be a thought, a normal thought in a guy's mind. I'm sure it's a, is, is but it a normal what, thought. But what if you How is that a normal But listen, but, what if your girl, would like, for three months, is just really not in the sex? You going to break up with her? Like, not with sex with you. No, but again, he just made the point that like, it wouldn't be a point to make it a break up, but it's just fair to say that like a nigga would think, damn, I would think that I could have a threesome. But even if like at while saying that he should be accepting the fact right. that right. Be, Okay, I think I think it's Joe normal, but it shouldn't be normal. I don't think that mm-hmm. because because whenever whenever you say something like that, you're clearly just looking at it from the standpoint of a man. Of course a man is gonna be like, Alright, well she's bisexual. Hmm, I wonder if she gonna fuck a girl with me. Being bisexual, like she still had a choice to do whatever she wanted to do. Of course, like, whether, but like I like so you. The assumption of that isn't given though. So like right. I'm saying it like I'm in a situation currently where I am with a bisexual woman who right. is into me having. You yeah. know what I mean? So like I I but I had to ask for consent in that situation. Right. So if you are like going straight forward, innocently asking for said consent. No, and no, accepting no. the yes or the no, right. that should be allowed. It yeah. just shouldn't be assumed that, like, because yeah. my girl's bi. You don't right. Know, and I think that's what they assume that, right? When you found out, you wasn't like, right. oh, bet. Right. That's more for me. Q, on the other hand, I feel like he assuming that. He, like, if your girl came up to that's you and was like, was like, I'm bi, the first thing, like, oh, bet. I'm getting Jesus. pushed. I'm getting two. I, no, not I said. Yeah. The first thought, but it's a likelihood. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> to me, that's still reasonable. <laughs> no, really think about it. Versus, Versus I, 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 if niggas were making Vegas odds on right. whether your girl was gonna let you fuck another right. girl with, well, the the over under on that shit. shit. I'm done. <laughs> Yo, the that's a higher shame, bro. Plus seven hundred. Let's take the over on that, please. Yeah. Plus, Versus plus her being thousand. straight, I mean, like, it, mind you, niggas still faking either way, especially right. this era. And they're like, yeah, yeah. chance me having a threesome. We're gonna see what it goes, bro. Percentage points, just like. But if she coming in, Bob, I'm like, oh, that's probably likelihood of me. 50 50 chance. So, but you know, I got called all as long as toxic, the toxic to be dumb. I don't think they should have called you toxic. Okay. Yeah, I, I think they, uh, that's a buzzword that people are getting carried away with. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's easy to be toxic Absolutely. now. I mean, if, if but the thing about it is, if you talk to somebody, they just allergic to you. Real shit. They, they you talk to them, and it's like that's the big thing about, about this society is that we think we live in a cancel culture. But it's like you <laughs> literally can listen, you can literally <laughs> listen to R. Kelly right now. Nobody is stopping you. Yeah, right. It's in your head that you feel like you got to. Facts. Because somebody played some Michael Jackson earlier, and I was like, should I listen to Michael Jackson? I'm like, Jizza? Michael Jackson said, Jizza? Don't. Don't. Jizza? Don't. Jizza? Don't. My thing is, this where the disconnect of the brotherhood no, goes. No, no, no. And, 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 and I truly feel you. I truly feel you. HBO going to catch these fucking hands. And I'm, <laughs> and I'm fucking uh, pirating all them Game of Thrones episodes. <laughs> so, ass niggas. so that's what I'm saying, is that you get to decide whether you're going to listen to Michael Jackson or not. Some people going to say yes, some people going to say no. We don't live in the cancel culture. Michael Jackson we live, we, just, we live in, we live in, we exposing proof. every, we, we, put, we putting the truth to the forefront. And we live in a truth culture. We live in an information culture. Yeah. That's, that's the big thing is that Every all the information coming out and everybody's like, oh, we live in a cancel culture. No, a lot of people are just trash. You don't have to enjoy the information. <laughs> like, also, you can like if, if I don't like what the fuck Q saying, I don't have to follow Q. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things you say I don't always like. I mean, mm-hmm. Q say some shit that most um, people don't like. Q, Q is a <laughs> troublesome <laughs> person. <laughs> <in the city. laughs> like we live in a world where toxic is being thrown around too much, but when it's thrown at you, it's usually. <laughs> <laughs> I never seen all nobody be wrong. <laughs> Podcast, you know, Facts. so it's like that's the thing is that we get the opportunity to know about Q, but we won't have to be like, Well, fuck you, because it's not that it don't be that serious. If now if something came out about your Q, we might have to be like, I don't know, it's a rat, yeah, it's Billy it's might have something like that. But but that's the thing is that I think a big thing is that <laughs> we get the opportunity to choose before we didn't even know to, right. to we didn't have the opportunity to choose, mm-hmm. so it's like now you get to choose about these things. So, and on that note, right? So, I think about that as well, like, because, um. Like you said, information, right? There's so much information, like, and I've been thinking, like, what would be the effect of us in a decade, two decades, three decades, whatever, of, like, you know, I feel the information, whether it's, like, just news constantly or just seeing so much shit in lifestyles or whatever and shit like that, like, what, like, how would we be affecting? What would they be writing about us in the two decades, like, by the generation? Like, yo, they got like, some fucked up, but like. We should go ahead, the thing about it is we're going to have so much more information on everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, even when, when information comes out about D-Ray who exposes somebody, or information comes out Sean King who exposes somebody, it's like, oh, Sean King ain't even a nigga, he exposing niggas and he getting exposed. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> and we, more and more this information will come out and we're going to live in this era, this time in 20 years where all the information is at the forefront and we're all gonna be smarter because because of it. We're not gonna be dumber because we have our own more information. I think that's what we'll feel. Not be traumatized. No, traumatized by what? We was. Uh, I think the big thing is that niggas thought the fucking Earth was flat for a long ass time. I mean, niggas still. And <laughs> niggas, niggas thought that the that it's not the flat. Earth, uh, the sun revolved around the Earth and shit like that. And they was dumb for that. They didn't. They couldn't even. They couldn't even do good science because they didn't know that shit. Mm-hmm. Now we have. Now we have the opportunity to know that all this how, how science actually work. We smarter because of it. We're not dumb. We're not traumatized because we know now we know how the sun work. We it's just we know now, and I think that's always gonna be better to have more information to not. Do you think ge- uh, generational paradigms are gonna shift? Because I feel like no matter how far the next generation advances, the like our generation or the generation above us looks down on us like we're destroying the world, and we look up we look up to them like they already destroyed it. We already own that. Like when Lil Pump come out, and Lil Pump is. 17, 18. Like, These niggas ruining rap. Yeah, it's like, I don't, I, not that I listen to Lil Pump, but it's like. I think it will shift, though. Yeah, I definitely think. I think I eventually think, we'll be saying. I think just even how this conversation here is like, fuck, fuck lines, fuck boundaries, not binary. I think that alone shows the shift that will, will be just everywhere and eventually. Because, like, 20 years ago. Three black men wouldn't be on TV. Yeah, that's what happened. Right? So, like, yeah, so, so now when another Uzi comes up. It won't be as much. Of course, it might still be there in 10, 20 years, but it won't be as much. So then. I feel like we already had Prince. Uzi shouldn't be struggling. Right. Uh, Prince, 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 I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. How much? It's weird how that happened. 
Prince made it. I don't know how Prince made it. But that's right, the thing is that we didn't know anything about yeah, Prince. Soft, that was the big thing. Prince will wear those and take your bitch. <laughs> and that's the thing is that Prince, we didn't know shit about Prince. It wasn't that we knew anything about Prince. But well, like he said, his ass was out. And like in the middle of like peak toxic mm-hmm. and shit. And it was just cool. Only he was cool to do it. Like he's like, Prince is definitely an anomaly. I think it's about how much healthy discourse you can have with the information that's coming out. Mm-hmm. So you have this flow of information that's almost oversaturation of it. But if it's being passed through channels where people can't put it in the right context, like all four of us here, we offer our viewpoints on it and it's very healthy. None of it is like, you know, damaging. If we didn't know anything about a topic before walking into this room, one of us helped us out. Yeah. And that's what it has to be about. There's, there's too many people that learn something and want to throw it in somebody's face. Mm. Like, oh, I know this, I'm better than you. If you see somebody that's struggling with something, and they don't know know about something. You gotta put them on game. That should be everybody. Game gotta be free. Right. That's gotta game be gotta everybody be move. You gotta help people out. So it's kind of like like Q said. Like I think we pushing towards maybe I guess you want to call it like an equilibrium. Uh, you know, elevated to this point where we can see it as what it really is or what it could be for that specific person. And then in general, I guess society will grow to be a little bit more tolerant of everything. Maybe by I guess if you even try to apply the rules of evolution to it or natural selection, I guess people that aren't educated enough or, or things like that, they're going to miss out on, mm-hmm. on that because just take racism into into consideration. If you're being racist right now, you run the risk of losing your job. You keep losing your job. You can't feed your family. Your family end up dying out because you decide to be racist. Mm-hmm. That's how evolution works. Mm-hmm. So it's like the more people that choose to be ignorant about certain topics, they put in their they family at risk because it's going to be a point where you can't go out and be like, you're a faggot. Cause yeah, boom, you lost your job, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, right? It's done. Like right. we get into that point, and those people are gonna die off. As fucked up as it sounds, but that's I, what I believe the natural course of action. Is it has to be extreme things to get society right in to, the middle, to, at least. With right, that. like gotta, right. it was extreme. Now it gotta be this extreme, just so at least we get into right. It exactly, you gotta go through through bullshit. I was talking to my friend just like about like the political climate. A lot of theorists say like for a true revolution to take place. Violence always has to be the first step. Right. Nobody wants to admit that. Like for us to to grow, just whether you black, white, whatever, you gotta attack the state. You have to kill them. They gotta see bloodshed. Remember when the bull Dorner went and started killing all those cops mm-hmm. and people related to them? They burned that nigga on television because they know the threat is real. Mm-hmm. So it's the same thing when you apply it to anything else, socially speaking, something drastic gotta happen in order for true change to be ignited or whatever you wanna call it. Yeah, and that's what's funny. <laughs> When, like, you know, if I get called toxic or whatever, and because of one, I don't care. But then, <laughs> like, two, is that to me, I think what I like about myself, I like about the, the show specifically, is that, you know, I'm open to dialogue. I'm open to people like Jizza cursing me out or right. disagree with me or having three people I already know can disagree with almost every topic or whatever. They have a dialogue because dialogue is important right. just for perspective of all exactly. kinds, even if everybody disagree with you, 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 or me, whatever. But I think healthy conversation dialogue is cool. Right, right. Um, uh, also, Jordan, you spoke about recently about your trans. It's funny you was talking about on Twitter how you transitioned from photography into graphic design. Mm-hmm. As you was saying, I was like, I didn't even fucking realize that shit. Like it was like, cause when I first met you, we were talking about your photography and all that shit. You walked around fucking up your leg and shit, all that shit, whatever. <laughs> and then as you, you know, seamlessly did your transition more into graphic. I was watching it live, but it never dawned on me that it was a complete, you know, 180 or so, whatever. So, speak on that, and then, you know, everyone else can just touch on, you know, period of transition, and what you learned through it, you know, maybe if you want, going through one now, whatever, you know. I think the thing about art is that, like, I never was the type to say, I'm this type of artist. I always said I'm an artist, because I never knew what the, the problem myself, because I started off doing poetry, a lot of people don't know, is that I was doing poetry in, like, eighth grade, doing it for projects, had really, like, this girl was writing poems for her. And that was the first devil in art. And then I was making buttons and I was still doing my artistic thing with that, but I was really into um, just doing the business side. But that's also art in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And then I went to photography and now I'm doing graphic design. But it's like, I never wanted to box myself into, into art because the big thing about art is that you don't, you never know what it's going to function as. Like you think about Jay-Z, it's like Jay-Z been an artist. Yeah. And now he's art, art in all these different type of ways and creating all these different revenue streams and all these, don't, but that's creative. Yeah. That's being creative, and that, and I think that's the big thing is that if you limit your activity to one lane and one thing, it's like you ain't you only gonna be that one thing for everybody. And I think that's the that's my big struggle with creativity in and of itself. Because some days I'll be wanting to take a photo, but I don't feel like it, mm-hmm. or I'll be wanting to 
uh, write a poem, but I want to make a graphic, or I gotta make graphics, but I feel like writing a poem, and it's like that's frustrating for me. But at the same time, it's like it feels freeing when I get to do the things I want to do, do the things I love to do, and it's like it wasn't necessarily a transition. It was more that I learned how to do something, and that's what I started practicing. Mm-hmm. So tomorrow you might see me post some pictures. Some to, uh, next day you might see me post some poetry, but it's like it wasn't that I really transitioned. It was just that I grew. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I, I agree with that a lot too because uh, I don't think. Uh, I think art is very reflective, so it's very much more about your mind and how you're reflected on the things around you and the times around you. So all of the growth that you have when you're going to become the artist that you are is just getting you to that point. So uh, like I, I feel the same way, and I started in poetry. Uh, my dad had me rapping at a young age because he had a rap group too, but like I started in poetry. That's all. That's all I did. I wrote stories, I wrote poems, and things like that, and that developed into my art form now. You know what I mean? And, and it all it all relates the same way that me playing saxophone relates to me. Like in jazz instrumentals, you know what I mean? It all—it's it, all loop. Mm-hmm. Um, first off, I want to say I saw it change from like playing like button code all the way up to now. So like that—that that shit was crazy to me. Um, I fall in line with both of y'all. Like I started off with poetry. Um, I I went to <laughs> I went to a, a school when I was like in third grade, third to fifth grade. Uh, the whole curriculum every day was Africana studies, everything like that. So I was introduced to like Gwendolyn Brooks, um, just just poetry, just black poetry. So like it started off from there, and then I just got into rapping. And then recently, I guess the biggest flashpoint like of change was like for the past two years, I couldn't do anything creatively, just for personal reasons, I couldn't do anything. And this year, I finally got back, and I realized like this is the one thing that fulfills me. And I look around at all my friends. Some of my friends got kids. Some of my friends. Are you know further in their relationships, things like that, and it, it looks like that's what keeps them driving. But even if I think about that, it don't do nothing for me. Like I could have a girlfriend right now, and it wouldn't fill me up as it does going to the studio. Mm-hmm. I look forward to coming here today. Like I was in here earlier today, laying down tracks. I mastered the track. I, the first track I'm releasing in two years. Next month, I'm so happy about that shit. It's just like that growth. Like I want to be art. Like I realize that. Like I want to be art. I don't want to be known for nothing else. I don't want to be seen as just like a nigga that's on Instagram or tweeting or anything like everything I do gotta be art everything like I don't want nobody to know me as just me normal like Andrew that's my regular that's my first name everybody like I don't want nobody to know me like that I want y'all to know me as Frisbee just that's it I'm an artist and I guess like everything that I've been through got to that point where I just realized like I gotta live through this I, this is the only way I can live and that's kind of where I'm at that's a question I got for both of y'all as being creators. It's like, I mean, maybe YouTube feels that. <laughs> <laughs> but you you are cute. Like, you is your name, right? Yes, sir. All right. So, but the thing about having an artist name, my real last name is not playing. But a lot of people would be like, yo, your last name not playing? I'm like, no, like, it's not. But, like, how do y'all feel about living through your artist name? Like, how do y'all feel about that idea? I got a little lucky because mm-hmm. I've lived with the name Jizza since I was a child, mm-hmm. uh, which some people think is weird because mm-hmm. like Jizza Raw is like very random name. Mm-hmm. Uh, but my dad's name is Jermaine Young too, mm-hmm. I'm a junior. Uh, and my I always had a lot of nicknames. Like I was Mini Wheat because I like fr- like Frost and Mini Wheat. <laughs> and I, I was Mini Wheat for a long time. I was like Mini Wheat, Lil Jerm, uh, Lil J, Jizza, and then Jizza Raw. Mm-hmm. And, uh, once we hit just Raw, once we got to that one, it was like nothing else happened. You know what I mean? From so when I was from five years old on, my grandma called me just Raw, everybody called me just Raw. Mm-hmm. And everybody on my dad's side did. So I was very ready to I guess live in that name. It's not even weird for when people see me I'm like, Oh something just Is that like JR? Hmm. Uh yeah, okay. exactly. Junior. Okay. Hmm. That's cool. Um, I always like lived with my, my name, like my my name that I go by now that's actually my real last name is Frisbee. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's always been a variation of that because it always stands out. Everybody gonna call me Frisbee Frizz or something like that. So it always like it was like Lil Frizz because my dad Big Frizz or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, then it grew to just Drew. That, like, that's a play on my first name. My first name is Andrew, so I just shortened it to just Drew. And then I went by my full name, and then I just cut it off and just went by Frisbee because I think stylistically, like it looks better. It's easier to say, it's, you know, fits in everywhere, and that's what everybody calls me, period. But, like, there's a difference between Frisbee and then Andrew. Like, if I introduce myself to people now, I just say Frisbee, and there's only a few people that call me Andrew because they know me personally. So, like, as Frisbee, that's me as an artist. Like, like that's everything. Like, every, everywhere I go, like, it's a representation of me. Like, you see that name stamped on there, that's the artistry inside of me. It's not really me as a person. I don't allow myself 
who I really am to come through as an artist. Like it might be in my lyrics, it might be something, but you will never know who I truly am unless like you in my circle. That's so interesting. Cause for me, I'm during playing everybody like everybody from during playing. Mm-hmm. Some people call Mr. Playing stuff like that, and I'll be like, I feel kind of weird about it now because I realized it came from play site and I just kept it. But I think the big thing is that I kind of live Jordan Plain as like a brand and then Jordan is who y'all know. Jordan is who y'all meet. But Jordan Plain is like whatever I post on Instagram, whatever. The stuff you see. And I think that is for me, it's, it's so different than what y'all, because y'all live y'all names. And like, I have been living my name for a while, but it's still for me sometimes weird when people call me like Mr. Plain or stuff like that. Because like, that's not who I am. That's like, who I'm presenting as, and I, I'm trying to figure out why I feel so weird about it. Like, not that I don't feel comfortable making art, not that I feel like not who I am. I just been feeling like I sometimes like to use that as my brand name, and it always is my plan is always my brand name. So like for when I, people identify me as that, it's like wow, like this is something that I built, and like make it, it makes me realize that like this is who I am. No matter what I, no matter what. Do you feel and then they need to be separate from your brain? Is that what you're saying? Like, do you feel like you have to be different? Not even. Brand? Or like, that, like people need to acknowledge that you've made the brand and not you are the brand? It's more so with like some sort of an identity crisis where it's like, Hannah Montana, like. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I am this person, but like, I also am Molly Cyrus. Like, you right. know, like, I also yeah. am this, like, I also, I'm both the things. But at the same time, you meet. You meet Jordan all the time, mm-hmm. but you don't know that Jordan playing is that same person. Right. So it's like, I don't know. It's not that I'm a different person when I'm out showing my art or anything. Mm-hmm. It's more that like when people call me this name, it's like that's not my name. That's more like if I make Kleenex, you call me Mister Kleenex. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting because you know at least with me, I like a weird thought I always had like where rappers always think about like what their wives call them or they like, like, when we say cribs and I see the wife calling the rap name I'd be like really you don't call them like the regular name or even they call them the regular name I'm like wow you call them the regular name or like or if the mom come in come around like, that's always stood out to me mm-hmm. so I always be like yeah like they do separate it like shit like that whatever I think mean, I saw like one time like someone called Snoop Calvin I was like that shit would throw me off. If I ever seen that, that shit would throw me off. <laughs> <laughs> but then when I see, but then I see him call, like if I saw someone call Jeezy Jeez, I'd be like, you was mom. That's fucking weird. So I'm like, that ass for his stuff. Nah, nigga, I need the kind of status that my mom has. To my <laughs> if your mom came to you, like. Hold mom come hold. It's like, like <laughs> yeah, damn, nigga, you like, made it, you it. <laughs> but hey, so in, in regards to me, you know, I'm not. Artist or rapper per se, or whatever, but it's, I always had to think with my name. My name is like, you know, like not normal per se, but like I've always, I've always like hated when people like call it, like say my full name, Q Day. Like, like if you like, like, not like if you like a grown ass man, you say Q Day, it's like, why are you calling my full ass name? Like, like you ain't my dad or like my mom. So, yeah, usually people don't call me. And then, but it's funny, I've heard some people say they only introduce themselves by a nickname, or they introduce themselves by the full name, don't call me a nickname because we not cool like that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, no, I'd rather you call me by nickname. Because we not cool like that. Right, right. so, yeah, names are interesting. Yeah. But in closing, did you guys enjoy yourself today? Yeah, I did. Well, always, yeah, always. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I knew these guys before, but now... I know, Facts, but and I actually got the you know, yeah. yeah. person, so Now cool. I'm back to my creativity, you know, I knew, I knew it would be a good match. <laughs> you know, I, knew all, I knew all you the same guy. He's just been in my notes for a while and I had the topics lined up, whatever. Like I said, this packing thing been in like two years. <laughs> <That's what laughs> I, <said. laughs> I was like, I was like, it's like the Philly Stones. I was like, Frisbee Wade, Jizza, Jordan, we were ready for that episode. Okay, so shout out to Jizza Roy, Jordan playing What the Fuck Frisbee. You know, I ain't. Fuck all their socials. Just look them up. You'll find them or whatever. Reese's a great album. He do buttons and graphics. We're tired of y'all type of creative shit. They get shit on bitches. Frisbee, he got he got a bunch of shit coming out creatively. Laying, laying down songs with the white plugs. And yeah, shout out to them. Ryan Kilov, talk about it. We out. All right.